Jasmine from TikTok asks, what do I do when I can't afford the lease after one year? Great question. You want to do an equity assessment, see if you can sell it. Uh, there's two ways, main ways to sell a lease. You could have somebody assume it. You can go to a site like Shop a Lease, and if you have a good car payment, you could list the car there and somebody could take over it, but it must be a good car payment relative to the deal. If you're paying, if you overpaid per month, then it's going, you're going to have a hard time getting someone to take over the lease. But if not, you can, you can get it rid of it there. Second is I want you to call the leasing company, ask for your payoff. And then you're going to call, uh, once you get your payoff, I want you to ask them if you have a third party restriction. Those are the two questions you're going to ask your leasing company. And then once you get that number, which is your payoff, you're going to go to CarMax.com, Driveway, Carvana. This will take you 20 minutes to do. Uh, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. Um, Auto Nation, sell my car. And Car Guru, sell my car. You want to get six offers. It's very important when you're on those sites, you... When they ask you, is your car owned, leased, or finance put owned, that's going to tell you what the market value cash is for your car to get rid of it in a day. If it's greater or equal to your payoff, you can get out of it. If you have a third-party restriction, then you're going to need to take another step and you're going to sell to a local dealer. But you got to see where your equity position is first. Got to see where your equity position is first. All right, I'm going on and I'm sharing the broadcast, and then uh, Dolan, you can queue up the next question. We're live on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So we are going to be um, taking questions from all platforms. The first one came from TikTok. We got a couple queued up on TikTok. So shoot the next one in, Dolan, and uh, we'll get to it. All right, this is another one from TikTok. I have two payments left on my lease. What's my next step? Equity assessment. Who's returned a lease to a dealership, just dropped it off when it was done? You never assessed any equity. You didn't even know. Let's, who didn't know that a lease could have equity that you could put in your pocket? It's not a guarantee, but many people all through the pandemic, we were showing them how to put five, seven, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 in equity in their pocket from the end of their lease. I sold my lease. End of my Jeep lease, I made $8,900. My mother made $10,200. Now, that was when everything was worth seven to 10 grand more than it's worth. That was when the market was once in a lifetime. But does not mean we will not, we, we will never run, return a lease without doing an equity assessment. If you've done it, I want you to raise your hand and say, you know what? I, I turned in my lease. If you ever just dropped it off, you can't do that again. You must know if you have equity and you follow those steps that I just gave to Jasmine. I think that was Jasmine who asked the first question. That is what's called in my book, uh, in my process, that's the equity assessment. That is what you do. Everything I'm teaching you guys is from my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. So every question you ask, when I answer it, it's going to be out of one of those seven steps. And the equity assessment is step two. You must do that before you ever return a lease for the rest of your life. A lot of you gave back thousands of dollars to dealerships and you didn't realize you were doing it. They bought those cars, put that put that money in their bank account when it should have been in yours. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. All right. All right. This one's from TikTok as well. Let's go. Facebook, type your questions in. YouTube, type your questions in. Instagram, type them in. So we can get to you guys. Uh, another one from TikTok. Thinking of trading a car for a newer, newer model. Should I or should I keep the car and just get the new one? Hmm, it's a good question. What's the benefit of keeping the car? Here's the, if you are a high mileage driver, then I would tell, let's just say you said, Deshaun, I'm driving 20,000 miles. Who is, is in, high mileage drivers, I want you to touch type HM. If you do over 20,000 miles per year, even 18,000 miles per year, just type HM. Regular driver, Jason, is what's the benefit of having two cars? Two, you know, it's only insurance. Um, you know, you're paying for one when you get your new car. I like to drive that car that I'm paying for. 
I don't want to be paying for a car and then I got this other car that I'm barely using. But if you are a high mileage driver, then I would tell you keep that car and get you another car. And um, but if you how many years are you keeping the car, Jason? How many years are you keeping this next car? Because depending on your answer, it's going to change my answer to you. So this car you're thinking about getting, how many years you see yourself keeping it? Let's start there. Come on and shout out to the sharers. I see y'all running the likes up on TikTok. Can y'all keep tapping that screen? Uh, just every couple minutes, throw a couple taps. It really helps the broadcast. And I appreciate everybody who's helping us get this message out. I really do. We couldn't do this without you. Let's see if maybe five years, then you should not be buying that car, Jason. You should be leasing. And I'm going to break this down for you really quick because some of you know um, the depreciation curve. And the rule of thumb is when we talk about the hidden money in your car deals, my job is not to just teach you, if you're willing to listen, how to save thousands of dollars by making dealers and banks bid on your business. That's how we make sure we get the best prices. You can't get the best price. You can't make the best deal if you buy, but you should have leased. It's impossible because you're, the depreciation curve looks like this, y'all. If you buy a car today for $30,000, today, I give you a car. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something. I want everybody to stay close to your keyboard. I don't want to, when I ask you a question, type as quick as you can so we can keep the dialogue going. If I gave you a $30,000 car right now, put it outside your house, you don't drive it one mile. You don't even touch it. We go outside a year later. Is it worth $30,000? You didn't drive it one mile. You said, Deshaun, I, I, got, I don't need the car, but I'm like, I'm leaving it here. It's yours. You don't drive it one mile. Is it worth $30,000? No. So that's your first intro into depreciation, the unseen expense. Let's go a little deeper. If you put 10,000 miles on it, it's worth less, right? If you put no money in it, if you put no mileage on it, it's already lost thousands. If you put 10,000 miles on it, it's worth less, right? High mileage driver, let's say you put 20,000, it's worth less, right? Now what you're seeing is the expense you've been taught not to see, which is depreciation. It has nothing to do with car payments. It has everything to do with that. We've heard people say, oh, you know, cars are depreciating asset. Cars are depreciating. What does that actually mean? I'm showing you what that means. I'm showing you what that means. When you're buying something that goes down in value, you have to look at when it's going down. When is it losing its most value? And your goal should be to avoid replacing it while it's losing the most value. How many of you have a car outside right now, outside your house? It's You've had it for at least, at least eight or nine years. Type the number of years you've had it. If, you, if it's more than eight, don't type three, don't type five. For those of you who have a vehicle outside right now, and it's been in your home, in your household for at least eight years, I want you to type the number of years. All right, we got J10, we got 13, we got 8, we got 20, we got 14. Okay, so we got 10. This is the leasing versus buying question, and there's nothing more important than this to the foundation of your deal. Because if you choose wrong, you cannot get a great deal. And if you're new to this, then pay, lock in for the next five minutes, and you're going to understand why. The people, those of you who said, Deshaun, wow, Jazzy, 20 years. The vehicle, the value of your vehicle right now, isn't it going to be about the same a year from now? Everybody who just typed, look at that. And I want y'all to pay attention. If those of you who are like, Deshaun, I never keep a car. You might be saying, looking at these numbers and saying, Deshaun, I would never keep a car that long. It's not for me. It's not in the cards for me. It's not my style. Not my habit. Not interested. Perfect. Pay attention. 12, 20. So all of these people, your car will be worth next year about what it's worth right now. What does that mean? That means you have avoided the depreciate. You have you have uh, you've won. The depreciation curve normally looks like this. The first five, seven years, five to seven years. 
but it starts to get like this the longer you keep the card. So now all of you who have answered, all of you who are watching them answer, their card depreciation curve looks like this now. It's not losing much value anymore. If you don't get to that level, there was no point in you buying the car because you're you're replacing it here. There's only two ways to go from to avoid this type of depreciated car was worth 30. Now it's worth 10, seven years later. It's only two ways to avoid that type of hit. One, you're going to keep it long term. If that's not you, you should be shopping for aggressive leases, not these leases you see in the car, in the in the commercials. Come pay 4000 down and all of that. These are not deals. Aggressive leases are below market prices and they're pennies on the dollar compared to what you've been paying. You cannot win buying cars and switching them like this. That's why you always have negative equity. That's why you are always never happy with what you're getting for your car. You buy your car, you come back, look three years later, you see what it's worth. It's always disappointing because you're trying to literally get cash back out of something that is not designed to give you any value in the short term. Leasing or long-term ownership. That's why the first thing that you go, that, that I teach, it's called the most important question, is how many years you keep in the car. If it's not eight, then you should be leasing. It's not even a question. We'll go deeper on that throughout the show. Anyone who wants to know more about that, you keep asking because once I open up that Pandora's box, it's like your mind is like, oh, but everything I heard about leasing, I heard it was bad. I heard you can't drive that much. I heard that yada, yada. They bill you for all of this stuff. All of those things, I'm going to help you unlearn because unfortunately, the people who taught you that were confidently incorrect, which is dangerous. Confidently incorrect is a dangerous, you're dangerous to yourself and others. So, all right. So that's the key. If that's the key, Jason, don't think about buying if you're not keeping eight years. You're going to overspend. And we'll talk more about that throughout the broadcast. Feel free to ask follow up questions. Go ahead. Shoot the next one. And, um, um, and I'll go in as deep on that subject as we need to for you to understand it. It'll give you some lease comparisons. You'll see what great leases look like. And uh, you'll see how there are pennies on the dollar when you know how to get great lease deals. Um, and that's the way you avoid the depreciation. Only two ways. Great lease deals, long-term ownership, 8, 10, 15 years. That's it. Two, three, four, five years, you can't avoid the depreciation buying. You just can't. You're going to lose thousands every time. Go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. We're keeping the questions coming in. We're live on all platforms, so just keep typing. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can. We got a lot of questions coming from TikTok. All right, let's go. Uh, should I put money down on a lease that I'm about to turn in? That you're about to turn in. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to assume you meant, should I put money down on the lease that you're about to get? Um, so check it out. Here's how you shop all your lease deals from now on. Here's a, There's one thing that I never want you to say again. It's really two things, but we'll, in this subject, the other thing is trade. This is down payment. I want you to eliminate the words down payment from your vocabulary because it's been used as an opportunity to get more money out of you. Who's ever went in, thought you were making a car deal, you thought you were gonna put maybe 1500 down, and then somewhere down the lines, these hidden things come like, oh, well, you got the taxes and fees, and then you end up putting more down than you thought you were going to. Has anybody, that ever happened to anybody? Hit the raise your hand emoji, or just type me if you've experienced that. You thought you were going to be putting this down. They, you might have gotten to the finance office to sign the paperwork, and now you got to come up with another 500 or 1,000 or the taxes or the fees or whatever it is, right? So I spent 14 years in the car business, for those of you who don't know me. I've seen the way the, the we call them the 80%. 80% of people shouldn't be in the car business. They will, they're overpriced. They will, they'll, they'll sell their grandmother the highest price car. It doesn't matter. They have no integrity, very little morals. We don't buy from them. What you need is to learn to avoid them. And you also need to learn to find the 20% who beats them all the time. So when you shop your car leases, you are always going to shop. You're no longer going to say down payment. You're going to say this total out of pocket, total out of pocket. See, total out of pocket means that's what I'm giving you and no more than that. 
you'll see the difference. Down payment can be, that's my down payment, but what about my taxes and what about, so that gets convoluted. When you start using, hey, I'm only doing this total out of pocket, it's hard for them to switch it up, especially when you're adamantly aware of what that means. This is all the money that I'm putting out of my pocket. You could also say do it signing, but I total out of pocket is probably more of a universal tone, uh, term. You shop your leases with 12,000 miles. Now, who was taught they limit you on the lease miles? Who was taught they only give you 10,000 miles? Because this question from TikTok, the person's asking, should I put money down on a lease? So I want to tell you how you always want to shop your car deals with no money down. That's what's confusing you. What's confusing you is you don't, when they mix the down payment and start throwing monthly payments, you are now not aware of what you're truly paying for the car, what you're truly getting. And so this is why you use what I'm telling you, you shop my way, you're never going to shop with down payments. That doesn't mean we don't put down payments down, but we do not get offers and we're not out there shopping with down payment money. Okay. So, uh, all right. I see it's happening to you, Fouché. So, you're going to get your offers with first month's payment, total out of pocket, taxes and fees in the payment, 12,000 miles per year. Once you do that, I teach in my book, I have a new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. I teach a strategy called the 25 to 5. I'm going. To, we're going to connect with 25 dealers. We're going to get five offers. We do not make a decision without at least five offers. Because once you see, thanks to everybody who's supporting the broadcast with the gifts, I appreciate that. Once you see how different the offers are, you're going to realize, you sh you're going to see how much money is in multiple offers. You must get five offers because 80% are overpriced. Don't try to change these people. Don't question, oh, listen, why are dealers like this? Why are the 80% overpriced? Listen, Jim Rohn used to say, don't sign up for that battle. Why does the sun come up in the east and you know in the in the east and set in the west? Like well, he, don't sign up for that. Some questions are not worth asking because they mean nothing. Just know that's what it is. 80 expected, 80% 80 are going to be overpriced. This is why you are not going to get your best deal walking into a dealer anymore. You're gonna sit at home. You're going to decide what you want. We call that shopping, not buying. This is step four of my process. That's, we have seven steps. Step four is shopping. And then once you decide what you want, you're getting it from home. 90 to 100% of your new car transaction and your leases should be done from home. That's where your power is. That's where you have the power of leverage. That's where you have the power to make multiple people compete for your business which saves you thousands of dollars. I'm going to give you tons of examples. This works every time. How do we know? It's the way we buy everything else. Everything we buy in life, we go into the grocery store, we need spaghetti sauce. You need laundry detergent. It's a bid. You may not be aware, but I'm going to make you aware. Everyone is bidding for your business. Hey, look over here, Prego. Hey, this brand, Classico. Hey, we're on sale this week. Hey, we have the best. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Everything that we buy, especially expensive items, but even low priced items, companies are competing, except in car dealers. They've trained you. They've trained me. If I wasn't in the business for years, I wouldn't know to focus on one place and think we all have the same pricing. They made you think Nissan we're a Nissan dealer. We're all, the, we're all the same price. So you might as well not even go anywhere else because we're all the same price. No, we're not. No, they're not. So when you start shopping multiple offers, you can do it by phone. I like to use email. I like to do everything copy and paste by email. But when you start getting multiple offers, you're going to truly see where all the hidden money has been. And you'll see how, how, how many of these dealers are overpriced which is going to just make you say from now on, I'm definitely shopping online. So this is, but you need to do it correctly. There's some information you must give a dealer in order to get quotes online. And ha and most of you don't know that. That's why you're having problems getting quotes because you're not giving the dealer what they need to get quotes. So we'll go deeper on this throughout the show. Um, but this is what we're talking about, y'all. For Like this is all in my book. In my book, 
you have the seven steps laid out. You could cue the next question question up, uh, Dolan. The, the, and for our launch, you can get it for 75% off. The book's normally $97, but for our welcome offer, for our launch, I said, you know what? We're going to do 75% off for 30 minutes. So when you go to my TikTok bio, you click that link. There's a button that says, get my new book, 75% off. You get yours. You won't pay the normal $97, but it's only for 30 minutes. Once that timer goes down, you go back up to 97. Same thing on Instagram. It's in my Instagram bio. And then we're going to put the link here for you guys here on um, Facebook and YouTube. All right, go ahead. This one's from Instagram. If I'm keeping a car under eight years, I like y'all using this eight year rule language. I like that. I like what I like what I'm seeing. Y'all paying y'all really letting this is really absorbing. If I'm keeping a car under eight years and will definitely go over the miles, how do I lease cost effectively? You choose the right miles. You never I, I, I was at Hyundai. And I experienced for the first, see, most of what I'm teaching, I learned through being in the dealerships and just watching, paying attention, asking questions, seeing bad situations, and then asking questions to make sure I could help people avoid them. I was at Hyundai. I was a manager for six weeks there. And the guy came, this guy came in and he was returning a high mileage Hyundai lease. It was the first one that I had really saw that I could remember. He brought it back. It had 70 something thousand miles on it. And I was just like fascinated. I said, you lease this? He said, yeah, yeah. I, all I do is lease. He said, man, I used to, I'm in sales. I used to buy these cars. You know, I was so, I was, you know, I was putting so much money in the cars, I, all this negative equity. And it was just like, I hated it. He said, once I got exposed to the high mileage lease, I never looked back. I drive this thing 20 something thousand miles a year, three years, I drop it off. I get another one. And so I said, okay. Because I had also experienced high mileage people coming back with lots of miles, but a lot of negative equity with it. Hey, Deshaun, I'm looking to change this thing. How many miles you got on it? I got, you know, 180. You know, it's all highway. And then you look at what you owe, high mileage drivers. And I'm like, God, man, it's going to be hard because you got all this negative equity. So once he exposed me to that, I looked at his payment and I said, man, he's only paying a couple dollars more, $150, $200 more per month to have all the mileage. That $152, $200 a month is a lot less than the depreciation hit that he's taking. Again, going back to the unseen expense. We already said, we park a car outside your driveway tonight. It's 30 grand. Next, I asked everybody on here, is it worth 30,000 tomorrow, uh, a year from now if you don't drive it? Everyone unanimously said, no, it's not. So even without mileage, it goes down. When you do regular miles, mileage, it goes down more. Somebody doing 25000 this is how you're destroying the value of your car. But at the same time, the loan is still staying high. So once I saw that you could avoid that with a high mileage lease, that became part of one of the strategies that I teach for high mileage drivers. This is only if you're short term. Pay attention to what Maddie's question said. If I'm not keeping it eight years, if he was, there's plenty of cars that you can keep eight years and just put a ton of miles on it. You're not worried about trading them or selling them because we don't trade. You're just going to get the maximum value out of it. In his case, he knows he's not keeping them eight years. How are we avoiding the short term depreciation? You do that with a high mileage lease. Second strategy, Matt, this is also in my book. I have two strategies for short term high mileage drivers. That's one way. Shop for your lease, 12,000 miles a year identify the best bid. And then once you identify the best bid out of five, you have them adjusted to a high mileage lease. Second is you buy your car or you, if you have a car now, you keep that car, pay that car off. And now you're going to go lease your nice car. And that's going to be your second car. I call that two cars, one payment in my book. That's what it's called. And now you have, cause some people say, Deshaun, you know what? I want a nice car. I drive a lot for work. But man, I, I want to get me something nice, but I don't want to just be destroying it. And this strategy becomes perfect for them. This guy who's doing the high mileage lease with Hyundai, he's not, he's he, that's not a nice car. Once, especially once he gets up to 60, 70,000, it's not the key. So some people are like, you know what? I want a nice car. I'll have my mileage car. I'll do, you know, half the mileage on that. And then I'll go and lease me something and I, I'll do half the mileage on that. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing. You got your nice beautiful car and you got your mileage car and you split it. Payment's affordable. 
and you're not dealing with all this negative equity like you've been used to dealing with as a high mileage driver. High mileage drivers are getting killed with some of the worst because you guys are just killing the value of your cars. You use either one of those, you're going to love it. Both in my book. So if you want that step by step, it's in there. Some of you like to shine. This is great. I don't want to try to remember all of this. In my book, it's right there for you, laid out step by step. You can get it for 75% off in my TikTok bio or my Instagram bio or just uh, scan the QR code on the screen or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. Either way, get your 75% off. Okay, uh, shoot the next one up. That was a great question, man. Shoot the, uh, uh, shoot the next one up. Let's get through as many as we can. Uh, this is a, this one's from Instagram. Would you re would you recommend leasing business vehicles? Well, that's a that's a question for your accountant. Um, whoever is going to be helping you benefit from uh, having vehicles in your business name, um, that's the person you should be asking. Which is most likely your accountant, most whoever does your taxes. Uh, here's what I can tell you, and I'll keep this very quick. Many people are putting cars in their business name with no business, or no business that requires a car. Be very careful. Um, there's two parts to this. One, whoever's going to teach you to put cars in your business name from a from a business strategy standpoint, that's who you need to learn from. Second is you can use what we teach to save money on the cars because all the what I see these people, influencers, social media people paying for these cars, they'll never tell you what they're paying. And they go and they re-up their cars like crazy because they need it for their brand. The money they are losing. Most people can't afford to, they can't afford to lose, but unfortunately, you know, they're desperate, but get the strategies, get the structure. I used to have people to, all the time ask me, Deshaun, do you teach Toro and, and uh, you know, and all of these, you know, I said, look, I don't, but you need two people. You need me because I'm going to teach you how to buy the inventory at below market prices. You need the business person who's going to teach you how to legitimately do the business inventory and all of that those are the two people that you need and without both of them you gotta got you got some incomplete counsel but be careful listening to these people man if you don't have a business and you wrote off thousands of dollars in business mileage or thousands of dollars in car payments and maintenance i don't want to be around you when you get audited and the sad part is those people who told you this won't be around when you get audited and you can't support that just be very careful when you, when you, you know, we don't, we don't want a second wave of the PPP. You know, you get a lot. You, okay. That's it. We, we're not going to be the dead horse. Go ahead. Next question. Next question, Dolan. <laughs> I think y'all get the point. Some videos, some videos were the worst videos to go viral. Did so much damage, still doing damage. Okay. Uh, TikTok. This one from TikTok. Facebook, YouTube, keep typing. We're not seeing any questions from you today. Do you recommend leasing over purchasing? So you missed what we talked about. I recommend you go back, watch the rip uh, begin. See, there is no leasing or purchase. There is no either or. There, there It's a, based on how many years I'm keeping the car, I should be leasing. You can't, there is no either or. When you lease... You are not keeping your car and you are avoiding short-term depreciation, paying pennies on the dollar for brand new cars. That's not going and paying what they have advertised or walking in a dealership and say, hey, work me up a lease deal. That is not what I'm talking about. When you add up the payments from doing that, you're going to see you overpaid. You probably broke the 1.5% rule. And you pay too much for a car you're giving back in three years. What I'm talking about is aggressive lease deals. Look at this. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example right here. So, and this one, I love to use her because she was in the middle of the pandemic. Middle of the pandemic, people were out here buying Kia Tell Your Rides for just five, ten thousand dollars over sticker. Bonita, Bonita got hers in 2020. Uh, she got a 2023 Kia Tell Your Ride, put six hundred dollars down. And um, that was her car payment every month for three years, $3,600 on a forty-six, almost $47,000 tell you right. Why is this so important? Some of you know, you may have seen the video, how much is every $5,000 in a car purchase price, how much is that per month on a loan? Every $5,000 is how much per, per month. So we're going to compare Bonita's incredible lease deal she got to someone who bought this same vehicle. 
to show you that if you should have bought, but you leave, if you should have leased, but you bought, you, you, there's no way to win. It's over. A hundred bucks. Good job. So that's clicking in. Ronald, great, great. hundred bucks. So whenever you look at a car, you look at a $10,000 car, your mind should automatically say that's 200 bucks a month, five year long. $20,000 car, 400 bucks a month, five year long. $45,000 car, which is about what, about what Benita got, that's a $900 car payment. So there's people driving this car. We're not even taking into account the taxes and anything like that. That'll put it up probably about 40. Actually, that'd be put it about 50. She, for her truck was 46, taxes and fees, call it 50. It's about a thousand dollar car payment for five years. She's paying 600. This is why there's no comparison. And sometimes your mind may play tricks on you. Yeah, but it's more than that, is it? If you and I both drive out the same lot, same exact vehicle, you're paying, we're not putting any money into the deal. See, I, I want to I wanna make sure I keep you on track when you're not, neither one of them are putting any money into the deal. They're literally just going in, no down payment. All right, what's my deal look like? 600 a month, great lease. Thousand dollar a month, five year loan, no money down. So when we leave it the same, if I'm paying a thousand and you're paying six hundred, is there any any question of whether you're winning right now financially? Same vehicle. So as we drive, the only way you can eventually win, or I could eventually win if I bought. Yeah, I'm paying a thousand, but I'm going to keep this vehicle long enough so. In 10 years, my Telluride is going to might maybe worth nine grand. I kept it 10 years. It's worth it's worth nine grand out there. But it's not losing value anymore. It's been in my household. And I was able to outlive the depreciation. So now I win. Doesn't mean you lose. See, it's not like, oh, well, you lost. You should have bought. No. That per Bonita knows I'm not keeping 10 years. I'm not keeping eight years. That's not my goal. Therefore, I'm going to shop for great lease deals and I'm going to pay pennies on a dollar compared to people buying. And that's my win. So there is no should I buy or should I lease? Do you recommend leasing over purchasing? I recommend leasing when you should be leasing, which means you're not keeping your car eight years. I recommend buying when you should be buying, meaning you're keeping your cars eight years. You're going to outlive depreciation, pay it off and have a car that is not losing value in your driveway in eight, nine, ten years. That's when both people win. And if you're not, if you're stuck in the middle, then what I recommend is you get out of stuck in the middle because you're losing tons of money. Get out of being stuck, buying leases out, buying loans, straighten them in, get to one, one choose a side. <laughs> I put two good sides in front of you, choose a side. All right, good question though. Go ahead, um, Dolan, cue the next one up. This was good. Wait, let me make sure I'm trying to make sure I'm sharing all of this. Shout out to the sharers. Everybody getting value out of this? Type dollar signs if you're getting value out of the show. This is what we do. All right, go ahead. Shoot it up. All right. A lot of questions from TikTok today. YouTube, y'all. Come on. Type the question. All right. Good to see you, Melody. I see. All right. When is it a good time to buy a car? Sashi, there's no, there's no good time. There's no bad time. Dealers have to make deals. See, I want you to not believe the marketing. What I want you to also do is I want you to pay attention. When we do these shows, pay attention to, um, I don't want you shopping in an emergency situation unless it's an emergency. What does that mean? If your car was totaled, stolen, then it's an emergency. You got a couple of days, no problem. You can use what's in my book. You can get bids as long as you get multiple offers, you won't overpay. If you have your back against the wall, that's going to happen every now and then. Multiple offers is the key. If I had to go buy, if anybody had to go buy a TV right now, I said, look, you got 48 hours, you got to get a 100 inch TV and you got to get a great deal on it. Is anybody worried about overpaying for the TV? Anybody on here in 20 in, in, in 2024? But is anybody worried? Dad, man, I only got. You know, back in the days, it might have been like, oh, shoot, 48 hours. That might not be long enough. 
But you know where to go, Amazon.com, Best Buy.com, Walmart. I'm going to find the best deal on a TV. What I'm telling you is that's the same way you approach car buying. The more you do it, the way you shop for everything else, the more you're going to see, oh, this is a lot easier. I'm in a lot more control. I eliminate buyer's remorse. So that you, you so even if your back is, is against the wall, if you're shopping, buying, you still should be getting multiple offers to make sure you're getting the lowest in the market. I, I'd say at least five because 80% are overpriced. Now, if you have time, then what you should be is in the market early. I teach something called two dates. The as soon as date, no later than date. As soon as date means soon as you can make a deal. Don't look at offers until you can make a deal. Don't entertain off. It may, it's a waste of time. Uh, you might say, Deshaun, I'm waiting to get this promotion at work in May. Then I'm a car shop. Should I look at deals now? Makes no sense. You can watch the market, but it makes no sense to entertain offers because you're not in a position. So as soon as is as soon as you could accept an offer. Now, that might be today. Then no later than date. That's the deadline. The gap in between that is your leverage. What does that mean? The ability to say no. See, you're about to start shopping in a way where you can say no. And the people that are walking into dealerships usually have put themselves in a position where they can't say no. So they're walking in saying things like, I need a car right now. My lease is up. If your lease is up, call, get a free extension. You shouldn't be shopping with your back against the wall. They're walking in saying things like, man, nobody has cars. That's because one dealer they walked in didn't have cars. Maybe they went to a second one, didn't have the color they want. And they're like, man, nobody has cars. They're broadcasting that energy, which is actually you. Go, that's going to cost you. When people, when car salesmen take it from me, I was in there every day of my life for 14 years. Not every day. We had days off. But when you say things, we're trained to hear them. No one has cars. That means the price just went up. If I have a car, you're going to pay more for it. This is what the 80%, this is how the 80% think. It's a mind game. So you don't want to be there. You want to be at home. And when you have the ability to say no, now here's what you do. You reach out to dealers for your offers and you're telling them, hey, I can make a deal right now. This is what I'm looking for. But I don't need a car until... Um, July 3rd. See, that's power. That means, hey, if I got a car coming next month, I can talk to this person about it. Most times a person walks in, they need a car this week, next week. That means whatever's on the ground, that's all we can talk to you about. But when a person has been proactive in shopping, which is what I want you to do, which is what I'm going to teach you to do, it's all in my book. And it's everything you'll hear me talk about is when you have the luxury of time, we, it benefits us. We make our contacts. A deal might a dealer might say, "Look, I don't have a car right now, but I got one coming in six weeks. Is that good for you?" Yeah, give me an offer. Absolutely. Now we don't talk, so I'm telling you, you could do it your way, which is call. I always say, ask for sales managers if you're trying to get offers online. If you're trying to get offers from home, you, we need at least five. If you're going to do it my way. If you're going to get deals like Danielle and like the people you see me broadcast in the show, you get at least five. Sometimes we get, ten. <laughs> I think somebody we showed the other day had 10 offers. So the point is, if you are, if you have the luxury of time, you want to use it. Don't be sitting here saying, man, I really can make a deal now or three months, but you, no one knows that. And then you wait until you only need to make a deal in a week, in a month. Now you start contacting dealers. You've, you've given away some of your leverage. And if you're shopping for a used car, you can watch the market. When you start looking and you can see, man, I've been watching these cars for 45 days. I see the prices. When I first came, the low side of the market was like 26. Now I see that low side is about 24, 25. So these are things you can't do when you're shopping when you need a car. So there's, not necess there's no good time to buy a car because dealers want to make deals throughout the month. But there is a bad time if you've used up all your leverage. And if you've used up all your time, then you must do multiple offers or you're going to get killed. Sorry to say, there's no other way to say it. If you don't know how to shop multiple offers and you walk in needing a car in two days, you are going to overpay. So multiple offers is always the answer. All right. 
Go ahead, shoot the next one up, Dolan. Great question. This one's from YouTube. I'm only able to get a rental for delivery work. Is there any cons to this method? I don't really, uh, okay, I think you rephrased it. Is there a proper way to rent vehicles for work or is it fixed market and there's no way to save money? I, I Absolutely not. Renting is going to be way too expensive compared to, this is why when people say, who's heard leasing is like renting? Who's heard that? Type the raise your hand emoji or type me if you've heard leasing is like renting. It's It's one of the most ignorant statements that, there's a lot of ignorant statements made about leasing, but that's one of them. Renting is expensive. Renting, you don't get a lot for your money. It's usually a short-term thing, one day, one week. You know, maybe if you had an accident, cars total 30 days. It's not meant to be long-term. So what I would tell you is if you were renting a vehicle, I would tell you, try to go on Toro, try to find somebody who's willing to rent to you possibly on a long-term basis where it's not going to be as expensive because I'm guessing if you're renting, there's a particular reason for that. Um, but um, the money you're going to pay in renting, you should probably put some of it to the side, try to get you a car, cash, Facebook marketplace, something to get out of that cycle and start to rebuild. Uh, in my book, I have a strategy of plan B, plan C for bad finance, uh, bad credit, where you know you can talk about cash, you can talk about buy here, pay here, all of even buy here, pay here, if done right, is better than renting. When I was 20, my first car, my second car, actually, my first one was a $500 car. Um, and after I went, I got a buy here, pay here Chevrolet Cavalier. It was, uh, I put $1,500 down. I paid $50, I think, a week. And I, I paid off the car in a couple months. That car lasted me six years. So the key with buy here, pay here is to make sure you're getting a great car, a quality car. And make and, and so, but renting that if I had to rent a car and I'm in a position, I would not, I would try to find somebody on Toro the lowest price per day and then see, hey, if I did a long term per month rental, how much would you give it to me for? I try to work that out, see how that works. All right. God bless with that. All right. Next question, Dolan. Shoot it up. We're getting a lot of questions. So I'm going to try to move faster through the answers. This one's Facebook. Once you have the car you've decided on, how do you go about getting multiple offers from dealers? Well, you could do it the manual way, which is I would see the only bad thing. See, and here's the here's the thing. You, you, you guys know if you've been on. If this isn't your first time, if you seen, you know, I don't hold back, but I can't teach you scripts that I've written specifically so you don't have to talk. There's tons of scripts that I have in my book that you're copying and pasting from email because when you're trying to get quotes online, you're dealing with trained people. And unfortunately, those trained salespeople are dealing with untrained customers that are not giving them what they need, not giving them the information. So nine times out of 10, they assume anyone online doesn't really know how to shop online. They're defensive and they're not even going to give me what I need to make them an offer. That's why I keep trying to get them to come in. So when we do our copy and paste, we're giving them what we need. And that's the only reason I say, I can't explain that to you. The only way to use that, like, all right, there's scripts for everything. We There's three levels of contact when we're contacting online. This is my 25 to five strategy. You're using this for new cars and leases, not used cars, different strategy for used cars, new cars and leases you're using my 25 to five in the book. And what that is, is three contacts. First, we gotta let the dealers know what we want. We contact 25 dealers online with a copy and paste template, tell them what we want. We need to tell them our, what we want. We need to tell them what our deadline is as soon as we can buy a car, which would be today because we don't contact if we can't buy today and then our deadline. And now you're gonna have responses. Hey, when can you come in? Hey, when can, can I, hey, uh, yeah, when can we have a phone call? Hey, uh, whatever. So because I used those scripts, I was able to write responses. I had to use those same scripts. Hey, Mrs. James, thanks for the inquiry. Hey, when can when we have a, uh, uh, I love to help you with this. I have a car. What would be better for you for us to talk 1 p.m. or 4 this evening? I had to use those scripts. So I was able to write the, 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 the responses to them. So we copy and paste. Now, the key is, 
whether you're doing it that way or whether you're calling, the first key is, do you even have a vehicle I'm interested in that matches what I want? So in that initial contact, we're telling them exactly what we want. Color choices. Hey, I'm open to black, blue, gray. I'm open to a sport model or a touring model. Uh, I'm open to this. Like, this is what I, like, you have to tell them that or there's no way for them to search the inventory and get you on and, and even see if there's a match here. So once we do that, that's your first thing. Do you have a car? Now, the benefit of doing the 25 to 5 is we're shopping out of 25 dealers inventories. So we're giving ourselves the absolute best shot of finding something where we don't really deal with, oh, I went to this dealer, they didn't have a color I want, they didn't have the trim I want. If we contact 25 dealers and there's no inventory, that means they're either in between model years, which means, okay, maybe the 24s got sold out, 25s haven't come in yet, we're on that bridge, or it's a rare car, hasn't come in yet, or it's a very rare car. See, that's different than you believing the car is rare because you visited one or two dealers. Once we contact 25, if the color we're reaching out for a pink one and the dealer is saying, hey, we don't really have that color, you know, that's when we know. So shopping out of 25 dealers, we get the best shot. We're trying to find who has a car. Second thing we're going to do now is we need to send a quote request. When we send our quote request, we're telling them what we want. If we're buying, we're looking for all, ca uh, all cash price because we're not doing tax. We want a bottom line price. And we're getting that from at least five to seven dealers. Because when you shop correctly, remember this, when you truly have shot multiple offers correctly, you're going to see a, at least a three to five thousand dollar difference from your lowest offer to your best offer. I've been working with people around the country. We have two million followers. We have seventeen hundred people we've worked with personally since 2021. That's the that is the consensus. Three to five thousand bare minimum. And in fact, some of you who are looking for higher price cars, you look at somebody like Kimberly. Kimberly used multiple offers. Her Maserati she was shopping for, she picked it up a little while ago. $86,961 vehicle. She, they offered it to her for $66,261. Deshaun, that sounds crazy. She saved 20 grand. Yeah, actually, 20700 on that offer. So that now you never can pick. You don't know where the bottom is. She didn't go in saying, if I can't save 20 grand, I'm not getting it. That's not how we go in. We go in, we do multiple offers, and we let the bottom reveal itself. We don't choose the bottom, all right? So once we do that, we're getting our quotes, and there's going to be a lot of people who try to stop that. Hey, we only do business in person. When can you come in? So you need scripts to respond to all that if you're going to do it fast and shop like we shop, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. But if you're going to do it manually, then you can call sales. You can call ask for sales managers and try to get them that way. But do not make a decision before you see at least five offers, five to seven offers. We nobody who's listening to me will ever buy a car without seeing five to seven offers, new cars and leases. Never too much money at stake. All right. So that's how we do it, Damon. That's the intro. And that's the only reason why I can't go deep on my 25 to five, because it's totally Internet based. We do it 60 minutes. So everyone who's like, Deshaun, I want to use that. It's in my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. You can download it in my TikTok bio. You get it for 75% off as part of our launch. And it'll be in your inbox in five minutes. Same thing with Instagram. Go to my Instagram bio. You got 30 minutes before it goes back up to $97. Get your 75% off. And uh, I'll post the link. Cue the next question up, Dolan. I'll post the link again for you guys here on... Uh, on um, YouTube and Facebook. Here's the emergency link. All right. This one's from Facebook. We got another question from Facebook. Hey, I'm in the USA, originally from Canada, and uh, no credit in the USA as yet. Should I buy a used car with cash or a new one? What I'm afraid, they'll give me a high rate. What do you think best option? Hey, if you got the ability to buy a used car cash, that's what I'd do. I'd get a great car, spend as little as possible on it, Facebook Marketplace, because I'm not looking, if I can, to go into a high interest loan when I can get me a car um, and then I can build my credit. I want you to follow Haley, uh, somebody named Shonda Martin. 
Uh, her brand is called Road to 750 Plus. She's uh, very similar to me in that she does these Q and A's all the time. She's live. She's a she's a genius. She's uh, clearly studied for many many years to understand. And even me using her thing, her her strategies, I've 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 added at least eighty points to my credit just from things I didn't even know. Like and and the real person who's an expert is going to show you where the blind spots are, things you didn't know. And that's what Shonda is. Some of you may follow her. She's amazing. Yeah, Cavante said, yeah, she's amazing. She is. So follow her. But yeah, I would be looking to get something inexpensive, point A to point B, little as possible. Make sure you find a, wherever you live, ask around who's the best mechanic in town. Um, ask like, who's the, who's the, who, who does everybody know in town that, you know, fixes cars, just a good guy, good woman. Uh, and you find them and you say, look, I'm about to go pick up a car. I'm going to buy it privately. Well, can I pay you, you know, $100 to inspect it for me, get yourself an inexpensive car, and that'll give you the ability to be on the road. At the same time, you have the ability to, to have the time to invest in your credit. So when you're ready to make a power move where credit's concerned with a car, be it leasing, financing, you're good. All right. But if you go buy a car overpriced interest rate, it's, it, it could really set you back. It can really set you back. It's happened to too many people. Great question. Cue the next one up, Dolan. Great questions today. Uh, YouTube, should I buy a car cash or do I get a loan? It's a great question here. A lot of great questions. Um, this is a matter of, look, nothing that I teach is really one size fits all. That's been the problem. Eight year rule, absolutely. If you're not keeping eight years, that is one size fits all. That's why it's called a rule. You should be leasing if you're not keeping your cars eight years. If you're buying, you should be keeping them more than eight years. But when it comes to the cash alone, here's what I've experienced. And the people who pay cash or don't pay cash, this is kind of what weighs it for them. What are they doing with, what are you doing with your money? Is your money making you money? If your money is making you money, I would have people come in the dealership, clearly had the ability to pay cash because I would ask them, you know, so how, how are you paying for the car? And they say, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, writing a check for it, but I'm, you know, what are the rates? And if we had a special interest rate from the bank, like 0% or 0.99%, 1.99, 2.99 even, they'd usually take the bank's money so that their money could keep making money for them. So if that's you, and the rates are low. That's why whenever we check, whenever we shop for a car, you always want to check, are there any spe special interest rates? That's the first thing. I teach something called the bank bidding war. It's not just dealers that bid for our business. It's banks and credit unions too. So in the bank bidding war, there's three rounds. The first round, though, is checking if there's any special interest rates, because if there is 0.99 or 1.99, no one's beating that. Therefore, the rest of the rounds are non-applicable. So if you can use the money cheap, that's when you use the money and you let your money keep working. Now, another person, a different person, Deshaun, I'm not really investing my money. Um, you know what? I just kind of like to keep things to a minimum. I just I got my cash over here. OK, then. Um, I would still, if the money was cheap, consider it because, you know, we could be coming into days where cash on hand becomes a little bit more um, important. But it, it's really about the cost of the money. If rates are high, six, seven, eight percent, nine percent, 10 percent then you want to put as much down on these cars as possible. If you're buying them, you want to you want to put. You know, you want to pay them off if you can, because the money is expensive. So it really depends on the cost of money. People, when the cost of money uh, is cheap, they 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 benefit from that. And 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 I and I would I would think that those principles will work for anybody. And that's you pick and choose which one of those situations uh, fits you. But if you check check the special interest rates, that usually puts it to bed. You see, point nine nine. It ain't no reason. Why would I? The bank's basically giving you free money to use. 
you can keep your cash on hand and you know still get the car so i know some people don't believe in that they don't believe in uh interest but here's the thing there's something called opportunity cost interest is not the only loss when you're talking financially opportunity cost is important when you put 30 grand in a car and it gets you we already talked about this cue up the next question dolan depreciation curve when we start talking about financially making decisions a lot of people see if i put 30 grand cash into this car what is my cash worth in six years thirty thousand dollar car what is it worth in six seven years y'all 12 10 so what's the return on that cash it's not even positive it's not even neutral it's negative so these are all the things that is like okay you go over that what I just said over the last six, seven minutes, and you choose what makes sense for you. But I'm never going to give you one size fits all uh, formulas. That's what has failed you. The oh, always do this. That's what has failed you. Go ahead. All right. This one's from TikTok. What's the best way to purchase a car once lease is over? Why would you want to? All you're doing. All right. Let's talk about buying our lease out. And I'm gonna keep this quick because some of you know that I'm adamantly against this unless you're keeping the car eight years. Because sometimes we look at our leases, right? And we say, oh, it's, you know, uh, should I buy my lease out? Here's the question. Should you lease again or should you buy a used car? When you are buying your lease out, all you are doing is buying a used car. That's it. When you look at it that way, it's gonna become more clear to you. It's just, it's your car. You don't have to go search for it. You do need to make sure it's a great price relative to the market, but that's all you're doing, buying a used car. So the question becomes, should I buy a used car or should I lease? And when you realize that the eight year rule, breaking it is going to continue to lose you money and put you in negative equity, you won't buy your leases because you don't plan to keep them again for another eight years. I'm gonna tell you how this, how I found this out to be horrible. Guy walks in the dealership. I'm looking at the car that he has. He says, okay, I'm looking to trade this and get me something new. I said, okay, how many, years, what's, how many years old is that? About five years. Okay, cool. How long you had it? I had it since it was new. Okay. All right, uh, you know how much you owe on it? No, nah, 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 I don't know. Now, that's not a good sign because if a person tells you they've had a car for five years, five years, and they've had it since it was new, wouldn't you think it was almost paid off or paid off, right? Am I, if, if that makes sense, type of dollar sign. If, if a person said, you saw me, like, yeah, I had that car five years. I bought it, I've had it since it was new. Shouldn't it be almost paid off or either paid off, right? So when he said, I don't really know what I owe, I was like, okay, no problem. We'll call the bank. We'll find out. All right. So I have the used car manager look at his, his, his because everyone who's in this position, I'm going to tell them about leasing. So I have really, I'm looking forward to that because once I tell them about leasing and I show them the numbers and like, hey, you keep trading these cars, look how much you're going to save. And, and some people will come in and their car was paid off. And I'm like, good thing is whatever that car is worth, you're going to get all that back. You're not putting it into your deal and using most of it as a down payment. So I've literally changed people from financing or buying to a lease, giving them a check back for their old car that they was coming to use as a trade. And they get a check for $12,000 and then they leave with a lease with no money down or little down. And they're like, yo, this is great. So I'm thinking I'm about to lay this out for him. And so used car manager goes, looks at his car, may say like, OK, I think the car is probably worth about 18. OK, perfect. So. Let me call the bank, find out what he owes. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm calling for Mr. Johnson here. Uh, yeah, he's he's interested in replacing this car. We need his payoff. Okay, the payoff is 18000 Wait a minute. How the heck is the payoff 18000 Hey, Mr. Johnson, they're saying you still owe 18000 Dang, it's that much? Yeah, I didn't know it was that much. Wait, how, I thought you said you had the car since it was new. Yeah, I did. You know what happened? We leased it for three years, and then we had boarded it when the lease was, when we bought it after the lease. That's how I learned how bad this was. 
So I'm like, okay, because when you buy your car off lease, most people, you're going to need a six-year loan to have a similar payment. So if your payment was 400 and you buy the lease, you're typically going to need a six-year loan to have around the same payment, right? So picture this, three years to lease it, then you get a six-year loan, six plus nine is what? Six plus three is nine. Anybody on here signing up for a nine-year loan on a car? Anybody? We got a lot of people on here. Anybody on here signing up for a nine-year loan? No? Okay. Room's quiet. So when we never sign up for a nine-year loan, look, she said, heck no. Right. We never sign up for a nine-year loan, nine years of payments on the same car, yet when we buy our leases, this is what's happening. So you look and say, all right, you bought your lease. You put six year loan. So you kept you leased it for three. Then you paid it for another two. That's five. Now you're tired of it. Yo, man, I've been in this car. Let me go trade it. Problem is you still have four years left of payments. That's why buying the lease is horrible. One situation where it makes sense, if you're keeping it eight years, that's it. If you're going to keep it another eight years from the day you buy it, then potentially go ahead. Because all it is is, again, buying a used car. If you said to Sean, should I buy a used car or lease? How many years are you keeping? I'm keeping eight, nine. Buy the used car. Don't lease. So preaching the truth. Thank you, Kevin. I'm glad, man. And see, when, see, hopefully these stories will stick in your head. So when you encounter these situations, you know, when, you, when, when someone says to you, Hell, man, I'm thinking about buying a lease. You'll never forget the story. So this this is, this is has nothing to do with getting the best deals. This has everything to do with not with, with having the best deal structure. So I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that click. Go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Oh, I see we already been on for. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a couple more. I'm trying to get through them as quick as possible. Y'all, if y'all like to shine. I love to know everything you teach of how you shop for cars. Everything I teach is in a step-by-step -step way. In my digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. Everything we do is a bid. We're buying cars and leasing cars in 90 minutes, 60 minutes. When you get good, you'll be able to do this in like 45, 60 minutes. You never spend more than 30 minutes in a car dealership. You're at home. You're the prize. You're getting bids. You're no longer negotiating one-to-one -one where you're in a losing position. When you're getting bids, you're in the winner's position. So you can get your book for 75% off as part of our launch. So we want to do 75% off. It's normally $97. In my TikTok bio, you can grab yours. It'll be in your inbox. And some people say, before I get to this next question, Deshaun, is it in print? There's a lot of reasons when you use it, you'll see there's no way this book could have been printed. One, things change. Room was one of the companies that used to get we used to use for bidding. Um, rooms out of business. If we had a hundred thousand books out there in your houses that you all paid for, now it's like, okay, what do we do, y'all? That's obsolete. Now that's when you hear people say, "Hey, you need volume two. I know just six months ago that I asked you and told you that I was going to solve your problem with volume one, but that's no good anymore. Volume two, get it today. We're not doing that. And, and there's nothing against them because, again, you know, they did what works, but uh, we couldn't, we, we didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to update this book on the fly. What I did when Broom went out, I updated the file. Everyone's book was updated. And, uh, and there's also links in there. There's links to videos. Like I said earlier, you have my scripts in there. That was all stuff. You, you're going to be copy and pasting this. There's no way I could have did that in a uh, physical book at all. All right. Uh, what do you think of swap a lease? If you can get a great lease deal? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we always compare, divide the monthly payment into the MSRP. The 1% rule has existed way before I started, way before I even got in the car business. The 1% rule said if you can lease a car for less than, uh, for 1% of the MSRP, no money down, no money out of pocket, just, you know, covering the first month payment, you stole the car. Coincidentally, every lease I've ever had was under 1%. I paid $330 a month for my $35,000 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. I paid um, 
uh, 325 a month for my infinities, then 345, then my highest one was 390. Um, and that was a $45,000 vehicle. So these are under under 1% leases. In order to get 1% leases, you need to shop multiple offers, but you also need a great lease program. So what we always say is under 1% is a steal. You'll see there's three categories of leases. Steals, great value. I call, those are under 1%. Great deals. Those are between 1% and 1.5%. And then where it's time to chill, over 1.5%. You're paying too much for a car you're giving back. So if I was uh, if I was uh, taking over someone's lease, I'm judging it by the same thing. Leasing is a value play. How much car can I drive for that payment? It's the ultimate way. The more, the lower that percentage is, the more you've leveraged your money into a great car. So yeah, I, 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 I'll check swap a lease. Definitely. Go ahead, shoot the next one up, Dolan. Uh, this one's from TikTok. Can I sell a lease car? Who didn't know you could sell a lease car? Type me. My cousin left me his 2020 Toyota Highlander with 2,000 miles, so I need to get out of my lease. I don't need two cars. Mm, okay. Equity assessment. Call the leasing. Matter of fact, I'm not going to repeat it because I already talked about this at the beginning of the broadcast. So after the broadcast, go to the YouTube page. You'll see it. Uh, I think it was either the first or second question. So within the first 10 minutes, I talked about how to do the equity assessment. Um, you're going to follow that process. And if you, this is all in my book. If you like to shine, I don't even want to watch the video. Is, is, is that in the book? Absolutely. Because everything I'm teaching you is out of one step in my seven step process. So the equity assessment is step two. After we decide leasing versus buying, that's step one. That's the most important question. Foundation of your car deal is, did I lease when I should have leased? Did I buy when I should have bought? Once you pass that, now if you have a car to replace, you need to do an equity assessment to see, do I have equity? Am I at a break even? Which means I can get out. I'm not going to make any money, but that's fine. I can get out. Some people got a lease. I could get out the lease early. You technically can't do that because you're breaking a contract, but if you can sell out and break even, then you can get out early. Or do I have a negative position where, in which case I can't get out early? Um, in the case of a negative, in, if you have a negative position on a lease, you can't get out early without penalty, without you know those payments. But if you're a negative equity on a finance, then that's different. There's no negative equity in a lease. I know we 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 kind of use these terms interchangeably. Negative equity is only with a finance because you have to pay the money with a lease. If my if what I if what I get offers for if it's below my payoff then I just stay in the car until the end I don't have negative equity so you do the equity assessment and uh, and hopefully you can break even and and the good thing about Toyota if they haven't changed it and I remember right they don't have a third party restriction so you should be able to if those offers you get are what you owe or higher then you should be able to sell that car right to CarMax or Driveway or AutoNation, whoever makes you the highest offer, and you can be out of it literally. You do that today, you can be out of that car tomorrow. All right, so keep me posted. Go ahead. Um, shoot it. Uh, let's see, we're over an hour. And I know Dolan, we, we always try to keep the show an hour, but it's like the questions start rolling in and it's get, it just it gets good. Go ahead. Shoot, shoot another one up, Dolan. We'll, 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 we'll wrap in a second. <laughs> Facebook, when, so when you go online to build and decide on needs and wants, you look at the cash price, not the lease price. We don't look at any price online. Pay no attention. Nothing online is a deal, y'all. No commercial. I don't care what you see. Deals are like this. Hey, look, this is their offer. Look, this is what we got to. Can we do it? What can you can you get them up any like can will they come up any at all? Nah, man. They said that uh you know they made this and it's like shoot. All right, let's see if you get another. Can you get another ten dollars? If you get another ten dollars a month out of them, just take it. If not, then you know do just yeah do the deal. That's a deal. You don't repeat it. You don't. I used to have to tell certain people when you got a real deal. Hey, when you come back, I'd love for you to send me friends, family, but don't tell them what you're paying because 
I probably can't duplicate that, honestly. That's a deal. The whole opposite is what they advertise to you. Deals are not advertised. Deals are when a dealer makes little to no money. Little to no money. That's a below market deal. If they're putting something on a commercial, that means the dealer doesn't mind if 80 people come in and get that offer this month. You have the money down? Yeah, I want to pay the 460 a month. Okay. You have the money down? Yeah, it was 3400 right? Okay. What about the taxes and fees? Because that's small print. All right. How much is that? That'll put you probably about another 3200 And then you could be, I could be at that payment from the commercial? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's do it. That's not a deal. That's not nothing special. <laughs> that's just, we didn't mind making that. Come on, if that's what you want. So if you want deals, you got to understand. Don't look at commercials. Don't look on the internet. Oh, this deal is advertising this. Deals are not advertised. Let the let that say. All this marketing that has worked on come at the end of the month. Imagine being in a business where your customers were trained to come at the end of the month. Imagine if you had a pizza shop, a car wash, and that happened. You knew that the industry was so good at marketing that you knew the last three days of the month, your car wash is going to have lines around the corner. That's marketing. So dealers make deals when they're like desperate. Ah, I want to do it. Nobody's here. So don't pay attention. Don't pay attention to that. Just follow the process. Oh, I see you got the book. Just follow the process. If it's not written in their time, don't add to it. Don't add to it. If Deshaun didn't say, go to this website and look and then write that down, don't do it. The whole purpose of why I wrote that book in that way is to take the guesswork out of it. If you find yourself like, okay, what should I do here? All right, I'm going to do this. You're, you're probably off my path because my path is very rigid. It's like a McDonald's system. You hear that beep? The nuggets are ready. Oh, don't change it. <laughs> And then you'll get the results. We call that trust in the process. Great question. All right, y'all. We, we 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 just hit an hour and 10 minutes. I would love to do this all day. We are going to continue to do these broadcasts. Um, once the questions start coming in, I just really, and I don't want to discount any questions. So I, I wish some questions I could just answer in 30 seconds. It's not possible without me just cutting it short and then you're not getting the value out of it. So we try to get through as many as possible. For everyone who wants everything I teach in one place, you can get everything in my social media videos. But I think what you understand now from being on a broadcast is there's lots of different situations. So when you're moving through my social media media video, you're saying, oh, he's talking about leasing here. He's talking about buying a used car here. He's talking about banks here. He's talking about high mileage here. All right. That means I got to try to piece this together myself. Same thing with the broadcast here. If you're like Deshaun, I want everything in one spot, step by step, it's all in there. Leasing's in there. The high mileage paths are in there. The new car purchase paths are in there. Used car purchase paths are in there. And step seven of my book is delivery. So you shouldn't be thinking, oh, I'm going to read the whole book. Then I'll start shopping. No, it's action guides. It's essentially a big checklist. Do this, do this. By the time you get to step seven, you should be picking up your car, or getting ready to have it delivered. So that's the way it is. You don't take a quiz at the end. The quiz is if you did it right, your car is on the way. So everyone can get your book for 75% off as part of our launch. It's in my TikTok bio. Grab yours, use it, and please make sure you email me your, your deal. As soon as you make your deal, send me an email. Deshaun, check this out. I don't want to see just the car you got. I want to see the price you paid. You're going to have price assurance, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be on this journey with you. So get it in here. I'm going to send this link. I'm going to type the link one more time for you guys here on Facebook and YouTube. In case you missed the countdown, I just typed the link. You can grab it there. Um, TikTok, Instagram, it's in my bio. Click that website and then click that button that says 75% uh, off. So until then, thank you, Ty. Great questions today. Great questions. All the questions were good. And uh, I'll see you all on the next broadcast. We'll keep this going. God bless you all. Okay. All right. So Dolan, I got my man Dolan. He's going to be bringing in the questions from all the platforms. Dolan, can you bring in Royal King's Royal King's uh, question first? What is the ideal car payment price? 
So one of the things that we look at when we are doing, when we're considering, you know, car payment is I always say, in fact, I had a video, some of you may have saw it. It was my first video ever on TikTok where um, it started out saying the worst thing you could do in a car dealership is to say, just get me to this price. We have a deal because the payments can be manipulated. So when you just focus on payment, you tend to lose or not focus on what you're actually paying for the car. So for example, a $30,000 car, well, that could be 500, that could be $600 a month on a five-year loan. That could be $800 a month on a uh, five-year loan with very a very high interest rate. Um, Thirty thousand dollar car could be a three hundred dollar a month lease payment. A thirty thousand dollar car could be a um, could be a three could be a, a three hundred fifty dollar payment on a ninety six month loan. So that's why we you don't want to focus on price. What you want to do is you want to focus on unless you're leasing, you don't want to focus on monthly payment. If you're purchasing a new car or a used car, you want to focus on what is the price I'm paying for the car. And once you are able to focus on that, you'll be able to easily understand what that price should equate to on a monthly payment. Like some of you know, what is every $5,000 on a car payment? Every $5,000, and, and this is something for you to keep in mind forever, Royal King, The the every $5,000 on the purchase price of a car that you're borrowing on a loan is how much per month? Remember this rule. I'm see if anybody else knows. Hey, Kenneth, good to see you. Yeah, smash that like button. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Mikhail. A hundred bucks. So that's a good gauge for you to go in with a hundred bucks every five thousand. So when you look at a two a ten thousand dollar car, what should pop into your mind is two hundred bucks a month. You should automatically like default to a five-year loan. I don't want you defaulting to six. Six is what I call the longest. I have a rule called the rule of 72 and the 10th birthday, which means we don't take a car loan more than six years, which is 72 months, and we don't have a car loan on the car past his 10th birthday. Ten, ten, bad combination, a lot of risk. So if you just default to every $5,000 of the car I'm shopping for, it's going to be a hundred bucks a month. That's going to be a good rule of thumb for you to for you to base it off of. So welcome to everybody who just jumped on. If this is your first time with me on a live stream, could you type the number one? I just always like to see the, the shout out the first time people. You're here for the first time. We do these live broadcasts. I call them right now. I call them car shopping Q&A, uh, car shopping questions and answers. All right. Welcome. 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 Um, could everybody, if you've been here once before, could y'all just type welcome and just keep keep sending your questions. After you type welcome to all the new people, type your questions in and we'll get to as many as we can in an hour. This whole broadcast is sponsored to, by, you know, and I'll be teaching out of my new book. My new digital book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. It's a complete system of how to shop and get bids online. You should be you should be doing 90 to 100 percent of your transaction online if you really want to save all the money. That's what we'll be talking about. You can't do 100 percent online with a used car because we have to test drive. But new cars, you can do 90 to 100 percent used cars. You can do 90 percent of your transaction online. So you can get your copy for 75 percent off in my TikTok bio for 30 minutes, Instagram bio for 30 minutes. Or if you're on Facebook or Instagram, just go to Deshaun's book or scan the QR code. All right, Dolan, shoot the next question and let's keep them coming. Just to, uh, all right. This one's from YouTube. Can you explain to me once I pick up, once I pick a vehicle, how do I get the best lease rate? Well, different dealerships, same manufacturers have different lease rates. Very good question. Every dealership is different unless there's sometimes price fixing by buying multiple dealerships in the same area. Some people will do that, which means we're going to go outside of that. Typically, when you look at buying up dealerships in the same market, you're trying to 
fix the price there. So if they go, but that's okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to shop so wide, you'll shop outside of them. You'll get used to driving an hour. If somebody beats the bid and they're saving you thousands of dollars, that's a good car ride when you're going to pick up a car. I had a young lady last year, Shonda, she lives in California. Every Northern California Volvo dealer was saving her money, a little money, but this one in Southern California beat their, beat her best offer by 3000 I said, so what are you going to do? She said, Deshaun, the plane ticket was 70 I think she said $73. I'm, I'll be on my way. So, you know, you'll get used to that. Every dealer has a different price. And I know you've been, you may have been, you may have thought, oh, these dealers are all the same. Nissan is Nissan. Nope. They're all independently owned, independently operated, and they're all competing. So when the way you shop for the best rate is multiple offers, I teach you to get at least five. When you are buying a new car or a lease, at least five offers, because 80% of dealers are overpriced. So out of that five offers, four are going to be higher. One is going to beat everybody. And that's the one that we go with. I have a system I use called the 25 to 5. I teach this. It's in my book where we connect with 25 dealers online to get five offers. You can do it manually. You can call and act for sales managers and you can run your scenario past them and you can get an offer from them. You need to do five, though. You're not going to see the big money, the big savings until you do five. I've been shopping with enough people around the country the last three years to know at least five offers, sometimes seven to save the big money. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, bring the next one in, Dolan. Keep typing your questions. We're going to try to get to as many as we can. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Deshaun. Uh, I go by Deshaun, the auto advisor. I spent 14 years in the car business. I left in 2020, five years with Mercedes, five years in General Motors. You know, I say that in most of my videos. And now uh, I spend time educating the public. We are hell bent, you know, on uh, getting the information to you to help you save money and help you save time. All right, shoot the next one in, Dolan. Let's roll. This one is from TikTok, upside down on my truck, but want to get a smaller one under lease. What can I do? Okay, so you're upside down. So anybody who knows they're upside down, this is called negative equity. You're, you owe more money on your car than it's worth. First thing you want to do is make sure that you've gotten the highest offers. There's three things that you can do with negative equity. If you're in a position where you owe more money on your car than it's worth, you have three options. Two of them, you leak, you get a new car. One of them, you don't. This is why I call negative equity the devil to your car deals. It's the bad credit for people with good credit because in some cases, it can stop you from getting a car. So you want to know how you handle it. First thing, first option, best option is for you to get online bids from the people who pay the most for cars. This is not dealerships. This is why we don't trade cars. Some of you, if you were on the last broadcast or if you've seen some of the other broadcasts, we do not trade cars because we don't get mo we don't get what our car is worth in the market on trade. Think about it. When have you ever gotten something? When it, if let's just say you got a water and you're trying to trade a water for a pencil, neither one of those things is getting maximum value. I'm trading a lawnmower for a bicycle. You don't get the most money by trading. What we do is we go to the online buyers who pay the most money for cars. They cut checks same day, very quick process, and we get bids. You're going to go to CarMax.com, Driveway.com, Carvana.com. I told you you're going to be trying to remember some of this so you can watch the replay or all of this is in my new book. It can be in your inbox in three minutes. You got 30 minutes to get it, 75% off in my bios. You're going to go to dry, uh, driveway, auto nation, sell my car. Uh, Kelly's Blue Book instant cash offer. We do not use KBB.com. They don't make offers. In fact, they waste time most of the time. They're, they're an advertising site. And we go to Car Guru, sell my car. Now, what I love, what, what's really good about this strategy is you have a wide variety of offers. CarMax, Carvana, and Driveway are independent used car buyers that buy and resell used cars. The other three I mentioned are gonna connect you with a local dealer so that a local dealer can bid. So you're getting three bids from dealers, three bids from online buyers. It's diversified offers. Now, 
once you have that, those offers are going to be higher than whoever you end up buying your car from. If you're using this, what I teach, whoever you buy your new, new car from or your used car, you're getting, they won the bid, which means they beat everyone else. They agreed to sell their car lower than anyone else. They're not going to win that bid and then turn around and pay you the most and win the bid on buying your old car. You can't burn a candle from both sides. So we separate our transactions. You need to buy, you need to get those offers because that's going to give you your least uh, negative equity position. Whoever went down, if you can pay the difference, that's what you do. Whoever makes that highest offer, if it's a thousand dollars less than your negative equity, come up with the thousand, pay it off. That gives you freedom to do your deal totally clean. And that is the best way. Now, if you can't, your second option is to transfer the negative equity, in which case you're now going to bring that car to the dealer who wins the bid to sell you a car. And you're going to see how much they could offer for it. So you get your offers over there. You still do that. And then you're going to have a conversation with the dealer who wins the bid to sell you a car. Again, you can't expect them to match the highest offer. Well, CarMax beat everybody. Driveway beat everybody. They will offer me 28. Does not matter. That, they, that car is not going to be worth 28 to them. And so this is why this is the second best option. And it's the transfer. First option is to take the highest bid, cover the difference, move with no negative equity. Because when you transfer negative equity, you need the dealer you're buying the car from to wrap the negative equity into one deal. I see y'all shooting the likes up on TikTok. Thank you so much. Can y'all also, everybody who shares, can you hit that share button, hit that arrow and tag one of your friends or invite one of your friends over uh, because they need this information just as much as you do. We all need it. So shout out to the sharers and please inbox me some ideas of something we can do for our sharers. You guys are, are really what keeps this community growing. I appreciate you all. So that's the two. Now, if you now one thing you got to think about when transferring negative equity is loan to value ratios. You can't throw seven grand on top of a, a car. Let me explain how this works real quick, and then we'll we'll get to the next question. Cue up the next question, uh, Dolan. We'll have a uh, we'll we'll wrap this one up in probably about sixty seconds. When you buy a thirty thousand dollar car. Doesn't matter what your credit is, the, the, the bank's only going to lend about 20, 25% above that car's value, which means this is why you can do no money down deals. No money down deals are not a favor. The bank allows them within the loan to value ratio. So if you're buying a $30,000 car and let's say you have great credit and you get approved for, you know, good credit, let's say good credit, most people will get approved for 20% above the car's value. So if it's a $30,000 car, the bank will lend another 20%, six grand. That means you have to put taxes, fee, anything in there, you have six grand above the car's purchase price. Now, pay attention. If you don't know how to buy cars below market, some people will pay 30,000 and they won't pay 30,000. They'll pay 33, they'll pay 32, they overpaid. It doesn't change the value of the car, which means you have a smaller window. So when you're buying below market, you give yourself the best chance to have the most, you know, uh, amount to build in, but it's still capped. So if it's 36, then you can transfer, you can put, you know, you got your, your purchase price is 30. You got your taxes. You got your, your fees, which is probably another thousand dollars documentation and DMV. And then you might have another 2000 in there that you can transfer negative equity. If you got 4,000, they're going to tell you, no, we can't approve it because it's above the loan of value. That's when you can't do no money down deals. So those of you who want to do no money down deals, you got no net, you got no negative equity. No problem. Those of you who want to do you want to you want to lease. No problem. But if you have too much negative equity, you're going to need to put money down because you're 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 going to blow out the loan to value ratio. If you have a 900 credit score. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, the bank has thresholds. So get out of negative equity, stay out of it. If you can't do transfer, then you're going to need to stay in that car and pay down the negative equity a little bit. And you should be transferring to a lease because the cause of your, I just explained how to get out of it. 
I didn't explain the cause. The cause is you buy cars, you take out loans, you trade those cars in, and you don't lease. That's really the problem. If that's the really the problem. So stay on here. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of leasing questions. You need to you need to understand what's causing the negative equity so you can stop repeating it. All right, shoot the next one in, Dolan. Keep typing your questions, y'all. I'll try to keep the answers quick, but I don't want to discount the answers. I don't want to give you a short version. Let's go. This one's from TikTok. Hi, I have a lease. I have my my lease have negative equity. Will that be a problem? You don't have negative equity on a lease. A lease has penalties. That means that what you've agreed to use, you've gone above that. So your mileage, you've gone above that. When who, How many people have had the dealer say to them, come on in, we'll take care of the mileage. We'll take care of your old payments. Come on in. Uh, how many people have people writing them saying, come on, we'll get you out of your lease early or emailing you or calling you. Don't worry about the mileage. Here's what they're doing. I see, I see, you know, this is very common. So you're not the only one. I told you, many of you are getting the same calls, the same emails, because those are templates. No mileage is ever covered. If the car is purchased, which means they work with your equity, we never let a dealer control our equity. That's the only time mileage and payments are forgiven totally. Car is purchased. When a car is returned, in, 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 which is what happens in many cases, they're taking your mileage penalty, and let's say it's 20, 2500 or that, whatever it is, and they're applying that to your next deal. And so when you do that, you 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 are essentially paying for your old car and your new car. You 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 want to know what it is? We compare three three things when we're trying to deal with a, a lease penalty. And, and and next lease, you you gotta choose right. I've had a lot of people that will write me or email me and say, Deshaun, I, I, I drive 15000 a year, but I signed up for ten. That's you, you, So you're going to ruin, or, or at least not even ruin, you're going to hurt your lease experience to save $40 a month. You could have just got the fifteen and paid the additional 40 for the usage and enjoyed, but now you wanted to save the $40 and you didn't get enough mileage. So don't blame the lease. When you hear people say this, Oh, I got all these penalties. It's was it's it's because you didn't customize your lease the way you were supposed to for your lifestyle. But in this particular case, do your equity assessment. That's the first thing you do. The person who asked this question on TikTok, follow the equity assessment process. Call your bank, get the payoff, and then go on those websites that I mentioned who make cash offers. If you have a lease, when you're doing your equity assessment, go to those websites. It's going to ask you: Is the car owned, financed, or leased? You want to put owned. Don't choose least. All right. That's it's not important. You just want to put owned because you're going to ask your bank when you call, do you have a third party restriction? If you do not have a third party restriction, you're with Toyota, you're with Chase. You can sell to the highest bidder. You can sell to anybody. If you have a third party restriction, now you need to sell to a local dealership of the same brand to get your equity. But that's the first thing you do. If you got mileage penalties, if you got payment, do your equity assessment. Nothing, nothing more important than that as a first step. All right. Go ahead, uh, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. We're taking questions from YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Go ahead. Uh, bring the next one in, Dolan. This one's from TikTok. All right. Make sure. Listen. Bring some of those people in from YouTube and uh and uh Facebook. Be doing a lot of TikTok. Uh. Does damage to a vehicle decrease the trade-in or cash value significantly? Uh, it does. Uh, it depends on how significant the damage is. On a lease, they allow wear and tear. Um, so you're expected to have little brush scratches, little dings, little dents. That's normal. Uh, if it's damaged, that's like, you know, a baseball size dent or the tires are completely bald. That means you need new tires. Yes, these things affect your value because whether you own a car or not, anything that'll make a person be like, oh, I got to put that money into that. That affects your value. If they look and say, all right, I see the car was keyed on the right side. I got to put money in. That affects your value. But I always say, don't repair anything that doesn't dramatically increase your value. Don't repair stuff where, all right, I could go and I could get these little nicks touched up. It'll cost me like 700 bucks. Those little nicks touched up, will probably only increase your value of your car 700. So you're going to pay 700 to make 700. You make you make nothing by doing that. Now, if, if it's something that 
you know, like uh, like that you can, you know, like a, a big issue. I, I say this a lot. Those of you, if you have a transmission or an engine issue, it's much better to get the transmission, get the engine fixed, get the car in a good position because you might spend 2000 or 2500 to get a a, 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 a a rebuilt engine, but it increases the value of your vehicle by, you know, $5,000. Those are repairs that are worth making. Little stuff like that. But um, yeah, go ahead. Shoot the next one in, Dolan. Okay, this one's from YouTube. Would you recommend new or used for a family with the current? Okay, would you recommend used or new for a family with a current car loan for a car, but need a bigger car? Plan to keep both for eight years plus. Okay, so good. She, she, so Brianna knows about the eight year rule, which is if you're not buying and keeping your cars eight years, you're losing thousands of dollars not leasing. So she's already said, I'm keeping my car at least eight years. So great. Um, here's, all right. If you're debating, who wants to know whether you should buy new or used? That's this question. That's a budget issue. Now, some of you, when you do your budget, the biggest thing is to get your needs. Everything you need, you can't compromise on. If you need a family SUV, if you need three rows, if you need, you can't compromise on your needs. I had somebody come into the Mercedes dealership. They were looking at a big family vehicle. They had they had three or four kids. And when I worked at Mercedes and they said, all right, once we did the pricing, even at our best offer, it was way above their budget. And what they said was, well, what about the what about the smaller one? What about the next size down, which didn't have a third row? I said, let me ask you a question. Didn't you tell me you needed a third row for the kids? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're right. Now, many people have done this. When the price gets compromised, they take out a need and go for a want. Big mistake. Big mistake. So the needs are the most important thing. The needs are, I can't live without this. I can't enjoy the car without this. I won't enjoy the car without this. It won't do what I needed to do without this feature. All wheel drive, whatever. I, so once you establish that and you go for it, some of you will look and say, you might say, man, I can't get a new car that covers all my needs for my budget. That means you go for a pre-owned car. You go for a quality pre-owned car and you get a below market deal using what I'm gonna what I teach. Let's say some of you are like Deshaun, I could afford both. My budget allows me to get a new or pre-owned. Now what? Now I have something in my book I call two different values. One is the treat yourself, because treat yourself means, you know, I only get a new car every decade. So I'm gonna get a new car. I only buy a car every decade. This car is going to be in my life for 10 plus years, eight years, whatever. I'm going to get everything I want. I'm going to get brand new, latest and greatest. That's one value. Next value is I'm going to get all my needs. A lot of my wants, probably all my wants, get a pre-owned version, not 30, 40% off the price. And that's another value. So that's how it works. It's a budget issue. And if your budget can afford both, then it becomes a values issue. That's it. OK, I go into all of this. This is exactly what you do, like because there's tons of people who could afford a new car and you just like, oh, should I buy you? I've been hearing people say never buy a new car, you know, but at the end of the day, if you have the budget, you got to remember if you're keeping the car for the long term, you'll you'll get some of that value back when you sell it in 10 years, in eight years. So if I pay 20 percent more because I wanted a new car. I'm going to recoup a percentage of that back. Now, that you're not getting that back if you don't keep it. So if you think, oh, I'm going to get a new one and then I'm going to keep it five years, you might be new here. You, we, we don't do that. If you're not keeping eight years, you should be leasing. You're losing tons of money, tons of money. And we'll be hitting on that throughout the hour. Go ahead, Dolan. Bring the next one in. Great question, Brianna. And uh, if anybody, if you stay on long enough, you will hear someone who asks your question. And thank you. Thank you to everybody who gives gifts, stars, supports the broadcast. And of course, thank you to everyone who got your copy of my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. 
as part of our launch. It's 75% off. And it's my seven step system for buying cars, leasing cars, new cars, selling leases, getting the banks to getting the best loans. It's all in there in a step by step format. It's normally $97. But as part of our official launch, you can get yours for 75% off in my TikTok bio or in my Instagram bio. Click that website and hit that button that says um, get new book for 75% off. And if you guys are on Instagram, I mean, on YouTube and um, Facebook, I'll post a link for you guys. You can click this one that says Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code with your phone and grab your copy for 75% off. It'll be in your inbox in five minutes. Okay, go ahead, Dolan. Bring the next question in. Let's keep them rolling. Great question so far. This one's from Instagram. What discount, what percentage discount off MSRP is a great deal? This this depends, and I'm gonna show you why. Let me show you let me show you uh let me show you why you can never assume what the bottom of the market is for a car. You you will lose all the time. So this is Sean. Sean wrote me the other day. Sean uses my stuff. He gets bids. He wrote me the other day and he said, to he, he said, I'm looking for some advice on this deal. He just wanted to make sure he was doing it right. F-150 Lightning XLT. Uh, selling uh, the MSRP is $73,285. Now, got a $49.90 discount from the dealer who won the bid and the deal and revealed that there was a $15,500 rebate. Now, all the other offer, what I asked them, because that sound, that's over a $20,000 savings on this brand new truck. I said, I haven't seen the other offers yet, but I'm assuming you got at least five. When we shop for new cars and leases, you use my stuff, you want to save the big money, you must get at least five offers because 80% are overpriced. So we get at least five offers. And I said, uh, I said, you're saving over 20 grand on this with the discount and the rebates. But the only way to know is to compare to the other offer. How do we know we can't save 25? How do you know the rebates 15.5? I sold two Maybachs when I worked for Mercedes Benz. They both had $20,000 rebates. How do we know that that's all the rebate money? How do we know they're not holding some back by having other offers? He said, guess I could have put a little more info on here. Yes, I got about 15 quotes. To go for him. And I, it, it sounds to you, if you've been shopping the old way, Sean saying I got 15 quotes using my online system, which is copy and paste in emails. It sounds like, wow, that must have took a lot of time. Probably took him 60 minutes to do. So and this is the same stuff I want you doing. Uh, I couldn't find anything under MSRP in his area. I ended up expanding my search 150 miles outside my area, and I found this deal. I'm going to another state to pick it up, which is something I never would have considered before coming and working and learning from me. You see, he didn't know he was going to save 20 grand off the truck. He didn't go in saying, if I can't save 20 grand, I won't get this truck. Look at same thing with Kimberly. Kimberly got a Maserati. She leased her. Sean's buying his. Kimberly. $86,000 MSRP, $86,961 selling price, $66,261, $20,000 discount, $20,700 to be exact. You get these offers by bidding. Now, at the same time, there's other vehicles like um, Eddie got his Toyota. He got a 2023 Toyota hybrid, all the bells and whistles. Received quotes as high as 10 grand over sticker. And he ended up getting $2,086 under MSRP. That was his lowest bid on a Toyota Camry hybrid. So he didn't go in. We never go in assuming. We don't know what the rebates are. We don't know how much the winning dealer is going to give. But here's what you know. When you shop the right way, you should have a three dollars to $5,000 difference between your best offer and your highest offer on a regular car. That's a regular car, three to five thousand, more like five. That's when you know you shop the right way. And when, as you get into luxury cars and, and, and bigger SUVs, 70, 80, 90 grand, 100 grand, you'll start to see 10 grand spread between your best offer and your highest offer. That's when you know you're shopping right. So we can't we never go in. And here's what and then get you up the next question, Dolan. 
What they're never going to do is take take the deal they got on one car and bring it to the other car. They're not going to do that because we know just because I saved 20 grand on my Maserati don't mean I'm going to turn around and save 20 grand on my BMW. The bottom of the market for that car is different than the bottom of the car mark market for this car. All we know is we get the bottom. Whatever it is, we get the bottom. Multiple offers. Go ahead. Cue the next one up. Great question. This one's from Instagram. How can you find a great car deal on a used car? So in my book, I talk, and everything that you're, you're hearing is going to be taught out my book. When you watch my videos on social media, all of this is out my book. If this is your first time on a live broadcast, welcome. You'll get to know that this is a system. I don't deviate. I don't, I don't want you having to figure it out. The system doesn't change. You just got to learn it and realize this is how I shop for used cars now. This is how I shop for leases now. This is how I shop for new cars now. So when it comes to used cars, the first thing we're looking for is a quality car. And then the last thing we're looking for is a below market car deal. All right. The type below. If you understand that there's only three different market prices. Market value, let's call that average. Is average a deal? Does average sound like it's a deal? I want to see everybody's answers. So y'all, I dialogue. So you you might as well keep your hands quick, you know, keep your hands next to your keyboard. Okay? I'm not talking at people. I'm not talking at you. I'm dialoguing with you. So keep your hands next to your keyboard. Nothing about market value is a deal. Something that most people are getting, the average price paid, not a deal. Above market, not a deal. That's even worse. The only thing we care about is below market. That's it. So now, our process for looking for a pre-owned car is different than the process of looking for a new car. New car, I call it the 25 to 5. We reach out to 25 dealers online, takes us 20 minutes. We're going to get five to seven offers out of that. Used cars, we use something I call the multiple marketplace strategy. That means when you shop for a used car, who's going to be shopping for a used car either now or in the you know near future? Type the letter U. This question, this answers for you guys. If you're going to be shopping for a used car, either now you are or you're going to be shopping for one soon. OK, so here's how you set this up. The, you're going to you want to look everywhere used cars are online. I compare this to if you were buying something like electronics, like a TV, you wouldn't just walk into uh, a, a TV store. You would be online if you. I don't I don't know if there's people that still overpay for TVs, but most people are not going to overpay for a TV. Not not now. You're going to be online, Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, everywhere. Everywhere there's a TV checking prices, right? We bring that same thing to use car shopping. Cars.com is different than Autotrader.com. That's different than cargurus.com. Yes, some of the inventory is the same, but some of it is different. Sometimes you'll see a price on car, car, uh, car, uh, car gurus and it hasn't been updated yet, and it's lower on auto trader. So you got to look at all the marketplaces. We use eight of them. We use car gurus, auto trader, cars.com, Carfax, uh, driveway, CarMax, Carvana, eBay Motors. We're looking at all this inventory. And what we do is we look and once we the first thing we want to do is sort the prices from lowest to highest. Because you can't get a below market deal if you don't know what the market is. Remember what I told you all about about eight minutes ago when you are shopping correctly, you should see. A uh, three to five thousand dollar difference between the best offer and the highest one. That doesn't change. And you might have been here on this side, based on how you shop and the way you do things. You might have been either on average or above. 
The only way to guarantee you're getting below is you need to look at the market. You need to compare other offers and you know I bought below. So we sort all those marketplaces and we do it by low to high because we need to know where the low side of the market is. Once we have the low side of the market, yo, listen, who shared? Who shared this? Because this is too, this is too good for you to keep to yourself. It really is. I know we in, I know we in, in this particular day and age, it's like you we gotta realize this is a battle of money, y'all. Your friends and family are right now, right now, some of your friends and family are out there overpaying for cars, buying above market value and at market value, getting no deals, leaving like, oh, did we do okay? No, you didn't. So shout out to the sharers. Appreciate everybody who shares these broadcasts. So once you do low to high, now what you're looking for is to say, okay, low side of the market's about 22, 23. High side is 28, 29. Low side is going to be trash most of the time. Accidents, um, frame damage, title issues. That's okay. As long as we know where the low side is, we put on alerts so that every bit of new inventory comes to our phone. We get alerted when a new car hits the market. And we're now looking for that car. Now it needs to pass three things. It needs to pass great title history, incredible regular service records. Not even a question. You should not, I will not, I never recommend you ever buy a used car that doesn't have great service records. B biggest indicator of whether the car was taken care of or not. I will not buy an unknown because when things start happening and you don't know why they're happening and you look at that car facts, and you see that it's blank, or you see that it's 20,000 miles of gaps, you got no one to blame. So none of this guarantees that we get out the woods with a great car, but it does give us boundaries to where we could say, I've taken every step possible to make sure that my investment is wonderful. So that's what you do. We do a car fax, we screen down from title to accident records, uh, title, service records, accident history. I won't do a car with accident with airbags deployed. Airbags deployed is a big deal on a used car. Vehicle towed. You see accident, vehicle towed, that's a deal breaker for me. That means it was a serious accident. You might see vehicle drivable. That means it wasn't a serious accident. That means it could have been a, uh, a little fender bender in a, in a mall. Cops came out. It gets reported to Carfax. Everyone drove away. No frame damage, nothing detrimental to the car. Um, you know, but again, it's on you. Some people say, I don't want any accident. That's perfectly fine too. And some people say, I'll deal with a moderate accident if it was something like that. And then the last thing we do is we need the price of the car brand new. If I, I bought an Infinity truck last year, I wouldn't have known it was a great deal if I didn't know that it was originally $54,000 and I paid thirty-one eight. All the other Infinities I was looking for were less originally. What I just broke down over the last eight, nine minutes was how you get a used car, how you find a quality used car, and you make sure that you're buying it on the low side of the market. The last step is how do we pick the right one and make sure we're saving the most money? In order to do that, you have to know what the price was originally. We get that from the Carfax. And if you don't have the Carfax, if you don't, I don't buy Carfaxes on these websites, skip it, go right to the dealer's site. Many of you don't know. Well, I don't think any of you know unless you worked in a car dealership that some of that most dealers have an, have a contract with Carfax. Literally, you can go to the car dealership's website and you can get the Carfax. All of this is in my new book because some of you are sitting here like you're like, man, Deshaun, this is great. I'm not going to remember all of this. How can I get all of this in one spot? That's in your, that get your copy of my brand new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Seven Steps. To saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. That is part of my multiple marketplace strategy of how we get quality used cars below market value. My resources are in there, and you can get your copy for 75% off as part of our launch. Look, my tick. Now you only got 30 minutes. If you visited that site, you saw that timer. Once it gets to zero, price goes back up to $97, which is still a great price. If you missed it, yeah, listen, I missed it, but Deshaun, I need this information. But if you get there before the timer, Go to my Instagram bio, you get your copy for $24, okay? This one's from YouTube. What are your thoughts, pros or cons on buying a vehicle in your business name? So there's a lot, oh my goodness, who's seen this? It's a lot of information out there, y'all. 
you got to be able to discern it's a lot of bad information now here's what i'll tell you if you got a business where you're going to be transporting where you're going to be using the car for business purposes we've had tons of people when i worked at mercedes they got commercial lines tons of realtors um came and got mercedes in the llc um when i worked for general motors they got pickup trucks they got commercial vans tons of people coming and putting cars in their business name they were using them for business what we have is we have a world right now where people want to make viral videos saying put the car in your business name but they're not going to be there when you get audited and you're writing off four or five hundred dollar car payments and you're not using the car for business so let's get that out the way now if you're using the car for business you can simply shop get your best offer and then when they ask you whose name is it going in it's going in my business name you do a business credit app and you personal guarantee you personally guaranteed alone if someone's teaching you how to get cars without personally guaranteeing then go learn from them and i always say combine because they overpay for cars i've never seen people that overpay for cars like business people putting the cars in their business they just say doesn't matter what you charge me as long as I can get it without signing for it. So you still need to pay the least amount for the car. But if they're going to teach you how to get cars in a business name without personally guaranteeing, go and learn. But yeah, that's what I have experienced. That's what I have experienced. It's not better. Uh, and you should be talking to a uh, you should be talking to a business accountant when it comes to, you know, whether, you, you know, an LLC or C Corp is better for your company. Many people don't have a business. They're just starting an LLC, hoping to get a car in the LLC. Um, if you got a real business, then you can pursue this. Call the accountant. What's the best structure? What's going to save me the most in taxes? Make sure they're going to give you the usage. But other than that, you know, and watch these videos you listen to. <laughs> watch these videos. Bro. They will have you audited and they won't be there. Yeah, but the influencer told me, let me pull up this video for you, though. Uh, so I'm not interested in seeing that. Can you just show me how much? Uh, can you just you know show me the proof of what you did with the car this year? Yeah, but uh, he said I could. No one cares. They won't be there. They won't be there. Go ahead, shoot the next one in, Dola. All right, this one's from Facebook, and we're bringing questions from Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. We we'll try to get through as many as we can in the hour. Why do dealers try to sell you a used car starting with the MSRP and not what it's worth at the present time? Because their goal is to make a lot of money. They're serious about what they do. See, you have been you you may have been taught not to take the car purchasing process seriously, not to take car learning the best way to save money on cars seriously. If you do it, if you did, then you're as serious as them. When I get a car, when those who, you know, I mean, we've been very fortunate. 2021, I've worked with over 1,700 people personally in my video library. Um, we've had, you know, in the last, my first book, 52 Car Buying Questions, we had thousands of copies of that out. But there's millions of people that buy cars. So we're fortunate that we've been able to help people who know these strategies and use them but it's still a very small part of the market um but the people who learn from me you're just as serious about saving the money as someone is about taking your money you can't get mad when a wolf bites you it's your job to come in with the rod and say okay no i'm good i'm prepared and if you're going in with old strategies and you're going back and forth with a dealer you are you're, it's like dancing with a wolf yeah i think i could dance with this wolf and you know, avoid them. I'm pretty good. There, this is a professional person who does this three, four times a day. So when you start shopping the way I'm telling you to shop, no one can take advantage of you because you're shopping from home. 90% of your used car deal is done. When I got that infinity truck I was telling you all about, I was in there for 30 minutes. All I did was test drive the car. I shook the person's hand. I said, get it ready. I'll come back. I had my own financing. I said I gave the dealer opportunity to see if he could beat it. He couldn't. And that was it. I'm not coming in. If you're learning from me, you are never going to talk numbers inside a dealership. 
And when you say, you know, somebody said, I really have, a, I wish I had a dad for things like this. Look, I'm sorry you don't have a dad, but God sends you who you need. But sometimes, you, you, you know, I'm here. I've had tons of women that wrote me and said, man, you know what? My dad used to take me car shopping. He's no longer here. You're my person now. Amen. Amen. You have it now, but are you going to act on it? Are you going to act on it? and use it and win or you will or are you going to stay in old bad habits of you know car shopping the way people have been shopping for the last 30 years before there was internet people was walking in the dealerships going back and forth internet came people walking in dealerships going back and forth looking on the website all right i think i gotta, let me go in here go back and forth no Internet came out. I found out I didn't have to go into Walmart to get a TV. I didn't have to go into the electronic shop. I sat right here and I, do, I use these tools. That's what I'm teaching y'all. The tools that exist right now. So you can sit at home and save thousands of dollars, whether you are a great negotiator or not. Won't matter. Won't matter. All right, go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Mm hmm. All right, let's go. This one's from Instagram. I keep hearing that used car inventories are rising. How come prices on used cars aren't falling? What I'm seeing in the last couple questions is for someone who doesn't know how to shop, there's no deals around. Look, we've been doing deals since the end. And what I'm going to do I'm going to give Felicia's deals for one of my broadcasts because um, I started our video library, which is the video version of my book years ago, 2021, November, middle of the pandemic, people overpaying by thousands, five, 10 grand over sticker price, like dealers just cleaving people. You know, you may have experienced that. You might have got one of those offers and had to sign it. Um, because you thought you had no other option. So when I started this, Felicia came in, started getting bids. First one to ever use what I taught. Got a BMW X1, brand new, saved $1,950, January 2022. That showed us deals. We've been making deals ever since. I don't broadcast them a lot, but in my TikTok bios, in my Instagram bios, deals ever since. But for the person, if you don't know how to shop, if you're not going to use, if you're using what I'm telling you, you're going to see deals everywhere. Getting bids. You're going to realize 80% of the dealers are overpriced. That's what they're supposed to be. You don't. We don't try to change the 80%. We expose the 80% through multiple offers. I don't go in and look at the, I just told you, we talked about below market, average market, above market. We're not trying to turn the people who sell cars above market and below and market value into the people who sell below market value. We're not. We're identifying below market offers by looking at multiple options. It's my two favorite words. And the more you learn this, the, when you use this, because this is not hard, this is 60 to 90 minute car deals. What you've been doing of going in and spending days in dealerships, multiple visits, let me go back. I'm going to talk to them, see if I get another 50 bucks off a month. All that, all the deals that you're going to see here, look, this is Charles. Nope. Let me show the used car deal because Yankee fan asked about a used car. Look at this. Um, Pierre. Pierre just got a Mazda CX-5, saved 20% off the original MSRP 2022. Very big thanks to Deshaun. Educating and empowering me to control the entire purchasing process. You hear how he talk? Sound like me. Empowering me to control the entire car buying process. Uh, use the perfect budget calculator. That's a calculator I invented that actually you get in my book. It's too much in the book for me to mention. It's a digital book, but everything I teach is in there, as well as calculators that I've invented. It says, uh, really helped me figure out what I could realistically afford. And with the true value percentage calculator, True value is how much I'm getting off the original purchase price. We call that TVP, true value percentage. My Infinity truck, it's three years pre-owned, 54,500 brand new. I bought it for 31.8. I got 42%, the true value percentage. These are terms that I created 
because what we did, what we do, it's never existed. So you're not going to hear stuff you've heard because literally we, I created it and we made it, we made it real by thousands of people using it. So it said 20% off MSRP. This is um, Vincent. Vincent got a three-year-old Lincoln Corsair. He said, I found a deal at 43% off at a dealership. He said, my target was 30 to 35%. So he went in knowing what the new car prices was on the car. He used our system, the multiple marketplace system, found a deal at 43% off original MSRP. That's how you know you got a great deal on a used car. For those of you who are going to be buying used cars, if you don't know the new price, there's no way for you to determine. And that's how some people got in trouble all through the pandemic. You Paying $29,000 for cars that were $30,000 brand new. If you knew true value percentage, you would have looked and said, okay, wait, the car is 30,000 brand new. How is, how are you charging 29? You wouldn't even have been there. But because no one has known and they look on websites and it says good deal, great deal, bad deal, and they're using algorithms to tell you that, people went in and they overpaid. Must know true value when it comes to used cars. But there's deals out here. They've been out here, Yankee Fan 201. You just got to change the strategy. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting the same result. And we know that. That's the definition of insanity. Change what you do, change the result you get. All right, go ahead. Uh, shoot the next one in, Dolan. This one's from TikTok. My car got stolen. Insurance is saying they want to fix it, but it's not in good shape. How do I get them to pay out? Your car got stolen. So, okay, so you got it back. Insurance is saying they want to fix it, but it's not in good shape. Isn't that the point of them fixing it? I don't really understand. You might have to add some more to that. It's stolen. It's not going to be in good shape if they have damaged it when they stole it. Now you're going to put in a claim. That's why you have insurance so that you can have whatever damage was. And you're, you, you're paying your deductible. So you're not paying if it costs five thousand dollars to fix you're not paying five thousand you're paying your deductible and the insurance is fixing the car i don't unless i'm missing something there go ahead shoot the next one in all right here's another one from tiktok what credit score should you have to use the 1.5 percent rule on leasing fair credit is good for leasing 670 670 and up if i couldn't qualify for a lease my only goal would be to qualify for a lease to get my credit where i could qualify for a lease it's just too much money at stake I have a three-year lease that's finished in June. Is it possible to negotiate on the buyout price? No, I haven't heard of it. I'm not gonna say no, but I haven't heard of negotiating on the buyout price. Buyout price is set from the day you lease the car. The bank knows what they're looking to get the car back for, what they're looking to sell it for. So um, no, I've never seen a case, but I'm not saying it can't be done. I just have never seen it in my experience. And why would you buy the car? Because here's what I want you to be. Give me one second. Keep send up. Uh, we'll do William's question next from Facebook. But to everyone who has, who's heard of something called lease to buy? Type of one if you've heard of something called lease to buy. Lease to buy. Or if you've ever done a lease to buy. Okay. All right, I see Mike, I see Ray Ray, I see A. Marie. Okay, Miguel said, I never heard of it. Okay, it's a horrible thing in most cases. The only time it makes sense is if you're keeping the, because here's what you're doing when you're buying your lease. The real question is not, should I buy my lease? The real question is, should I buy a used car or should I lease? You've already had the car for three years, leasing it. Now you have an option. The option is I could buy this vehicle. I'm not going to go into detail about how to make sure that's a good price. It's simply just comparing to the price of a comparable used car on the market. But if you buy your lease, you're buying a used car. That's all you're doing. So when you're saying, should I buy my lease? That's not the question. The question is, should I release a car, go shop for another lease, or should I buy a used car? 
Now, the downside about buying the used car, which is your lease, is you've already had the car for three years. Most people, to afford the lease buyout, you need to take another six-year loan. So if your lease payment was $400 a month, usually when you buy your lease, to have an, a, a round about $400 a month payment, you're going to need a six-year loan on the balance. What is six plus three, everybody? We got some very smart people on here. What's six plus three? Come on, I told y'all, keep your keep keep your hands by your keyboard. That's it. Nine. Good job. Would anybody in here sign up for a nine-year loan on a car? Same car, signing up to pay for that car for nine years. Look, bunch of no's. Bunch of no's. Never. That is what you're, that is what many people are signing up for. Now, if you keep it, you can possibly, if you keep it for 11 years, you could possibly get some of that back. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. But when you trade in the car and you glee and you, you sign up, you buy your lease, you already paid for three years, you sign up for another six year loan and you trade it because most times you get tired of the car. You're like, man, all right, I've been in this car for five years. I had people walk in the dealership. This was the, what they did. Been in the car for five, six years. Said, you know what, man? All right, it's time. I find out that they bought the lease out. They still owe a ton of money on it because there's still three, four years of payments left. You've been in the car for five years and you're like, man, all right, let me go replace it. Hey, you still owe $20,000. You still owe eight. Oh, dad. Buying your lease out is one of the worst things that you can possibly do because it's just agreeing to too many payments on the same car, unless you just plan on keeping the car for eight years. If you say, rare case, and cue up the next question, Dolan, you can put, you can put it up now. It's my last sentence. If you say, Deshaun, I leased the car. I just fell in love with that car. I want to keep that thing until the wheels fall off. I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to just have it for the next 10 years. Then buy the car. You fell in love with it, and you're like, man, I want this car for the next 10, 12 years, then you can buy the lease. If it ain't that, it's one of the worst things you could possibly do. All right, William from Facebook said, I've been looking at a brand new 2023 Lincoln Aviator. It's been on a lot for months. Uh, you already lost me. Let me tell you why. We don't identify one car. If that dealership's at an 80% deal, there's no way that we could get great deals on it. If we don't identify, we don't lock in, cars are cookie cutter. Cars are cookie cutter. That means whatever that car is, there's several of them around. There's no unique cars. They, they This is an assembly line. Bloop, bloop. Thousands, thousands, thousands coming into the Northeast, going into the Southeast, going into the Midwest. Thousands. So when you look at a car, don't you have to see that like I see it. New car, used car, doesn't matter. There are hundreds of this car out there. And I need to make sure I connect with enough dealers to know, because you said 69000 has been on there. They're asking, what happened if somebody else has a similar car and it's not selling for them and they're willing to give it for, you don't know what rebate there is in there. You don't know, maybe Lincoln gave them a $5,000 rebate on old Lincoln and maybe they're not discounting the car that much. Maybe they got a $5,000 rebate and they're only discounting the car 1600 You don't know. And so that's why we stay at home New cars, leases, we get multiple offers. You could do it my way, which is in my book. It's called Car Shopping for People that Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book. Be in your inbox. You cannot talk, and you can use my email scripts and templates. We connect with 25 dealers online in 20 minutes. We're going to get five to seven offers. Or you could do it your way, and which is a manual way. It's not even your way. It's a manual way. And you can call several dealers. I would ask for the sales manager, and you try to get five quotes. Either way, you need to get at least five offers because you have no idea what the best offer is. You saw it. We talked about this about 20 minutes ago. I showed you how much money Sean saved. I showed you how much money Kimberly saved. They saved 20 grand. If they would have got excited about 10 grand, very important. If they if they would have looked at an offer and said, Dad, this deal is taking 10 grand off of me. Man, this sounds too good, man. I got to sign this. They never would have got 20. 
You can't assume what the bottom is for a vehicle. That only comes through multiple offers. Everybody clear? If everybody's clear on that, type clear. If you're clear on that, this is for new cars and leases. The way we shop for new cars and leases is to reach out and get at least five offers. Once you do that, because you're never going to see how much money is on the line until you do this. Once you start doing this, I had somebody email me, said, man, Deshaun, I just started doing this. I made, I made a couple phone calls. I got three grand better than my first offer. I said, see? See what I'm telling you? See, multiple offers is how we buy everything. All I'm teaching you to do is buy cars the same way you buy everything else, the same way we buy every other product. And if you notice, the way you've been buying cars is not the way you buy anything else. You don't walk into stores and say, hey, you know, come on, come on. You don't do that with anything else. And I'm telling you, you don't have to. They made you think you do, but you don't have to. You can sit right at home and control your car deal and have multiple people bid for your business. And that's what my entire book is about. Car shopping for people that hate car shopping, seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. Why do I say avoiding dealerships? Because not only do I want to save money, I, I don't want to be in the dealership for more than 30 minutes. And I've leased four cars in the last 10 years, three Infinities and a Jeep. I've, I've bought this Infinity truck. I have not spent more than 30 minutes in a dealership. Not only that, anyone who's learned from me has not spent more than 30 minutes in a dealership. It doesn't take that. So I don't want you to be like, yeah, Deshaun, I used your stuff and I was in the dealer for about three hours. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't use my stuff. When you use my stuff, you're in and out of there in 30 minutes. Tops. Tops. All right, so you can get your copy for 75% off as part of our book launch in my TikTok bio. There's a website there. And in my Instagram bio, there's a website there. And just click that button. You got 30 minutes, though. If you visited that site, 30-minute timer started. Once it goes to zero, it's back up to $97. Um, but you can get it for $24. And if you're, on tic, uh, if you're on YouTube or Instagram, I mean, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can scan the QR code or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com, which is on the screen. All right, come on. We got a card. We got time for a couple more. Go ahead. Cue them up. We'll try to do these last couple ones quick as possible, Dolan. Go ahead. Shoot the next one. And everybody getting value. If you're getting value out of this broadcast, can you type dollar signs? If you're getting value out of this, this is what we're going to Listen, I love doing these. Um, make sure when you talk to your coworkers, you tune in. Make sure you learn this stuff. This stuff is worth thousands to you. None, nothing that I talk about will ever be hundreds. I'm not telling you to, to, none of this is hundreds, hundreds per month, hundreds per month, <laughs> but all right, this is from TikTok. How do I negotiate purchasing additional mileage after the lease agreement? Typically, there's just a, there's a, there's a, they have a structure for that. If you're going to purchase additional mileage, you can call a leasing company. I know as long as like I, I think I remember BMW and Mercedes, they used to let you do it as long as you weren't within like the last three or six months and they just charge you for the mileage. I think they charge you, you know, 15, whatever it is. It's a set thing. You're not negotiating it. You're just you're just calling to add more mileage. Yeah, go ahead. Next one. Listen, I'm going to knock out as many of these as possible in the last couple of minutes. Go ahead. Uh, YouTube. This one, bro, says his book is 75% off every time I see this live stream. And each time I go to his website, the book is $100, no discount. Even when he claimed to resend the code, it's $100. Sketch. It's your fault. You missed it. You missed it. That's an introductory offer. You missed it. It's not there anymore for you. Next question. And unfortunately for you, you're going to not pay $97 and you're going to overpay for cars because I can just tell by the way you talk. Send me your car deal. Remember him. Send me your car deal. Next car you next car deal you make, send me the paperwork. I love to talk about it on the show. Be a learning experience for everybody. Uh, YouTube, got the book. I'm looking for a three-year-old pre-owned car. Should I be looking for a 2021 or 2022 if, I, if I'm looking to buy this year? So when it comes to newer, newer used cars, you don't typically see them. I'm going to tell you why. 
There's only two ways dealers get used cars. Somebody trades them in or they buy, they come off lease. Average lease is going to be three years. So you're not going to see many two-year-old cars because not many people buy their car and go trade them in in two years. Not if, they, not, not if they're financially wise. You don't want to do that. So you typically have a harder time finding a two-year-old pre-owned car than you do a three-year-old pre-owned car. Now, if, in the case of a... I, I would still look. I'd look at a two-year-old, see what you got. And if you can find something that was that is within the budget, two years old, then I would do that. I don't go older until I see that I can't find anything in the budget. And then I'll go older by one year. Or I might include and, and, and start out looking at 12,000 per year, average miles driven. You don't want to start expanding mileage or expanding going back older in years unless you have to. And each time you go back, you should see more inventory. But start, you can start for the 2022. And another thing, one thing before you go to the next one, um, Dolan, I don't recommend looking at one year old pre owned cars. I'm going to tell you why. Or even two year old pre owned cars before you see what the price on a new one is. Because you don't know how much. And I've had uh, Julie's a perfect example. Let me see if I have her. I don't think I have her stuff here. I don't. Wait. Hold on. Let me see if I can tell you about Julie. Because Julie asked me, she said, Do you think I should buy a new car? She she was looking for, she was no, she was looking for a one or two year old used car. I said, Julie, she said, How much should I be saving? Now remember, we don't know how much a great deal is until we have comparison offers. Thanks, Big and Brown. Enjoy it. Use the book. Enjoy it. Said I bought the book. Shout out to everybody who bought the book. If you bought the book, type, um, I don't know. <laughs> Just shout out to everybody who bought the book. Use it. Use it and win. Um, she said, should I, and I told her, I said, look, if you don't have a lot of used cars out there, which you won't if it's two years old, you don't have enough offers to be able to compare. I said, shop for a new one. Use the offer. You have no idea what the new market is. And so if I could save big money on a new one, then that tells me how much I need to save on a second one, on a one-year-old one, on a two-year-old one. Now, if the discounts on a new one are not big, then maybe, maybe you know, I'm not, because she's like, okay, it looks like with a used one, I'm saving like $8,000 off the new price. If I get one-year-old, I said, shop for a new one. She ended up getting a better deal shopping for a brand new one than she thought she would get buying a one-year-old one. So whenever you're buying something that's relatively new, one or two years old, I always tell you, shop for a new one first. You never know. It could be tons of rebates. You could end up like, um, there's people buying that same Maserati that, or, or that same vehicle that Sean got or the same Maserati that Kimberly got. We showed their deals earlier. If they don't know that you could save 20 grand off a new one, how much do you think they're expecting to save off a one-year-old? Not much. But if I could save 20 grand off a new one, and this is different with every car, this is why I'm telling you this. If I don't know I could save 20 grand and I have no idea, that means for a one or two-year-old one, I better be saving 30. If I could get a brand new one, no miles, first owner, 20 grand off, and that's the market for the new one, then if I'm getting a one or two year old one, I need to save at least 25, 30. Does that make sense? Type makes sense if y'all if y'all are getting that. This is only for the people who are like, Deshaun, I'm thinking about buying a one or two year old used car. I don't want one that's too old. You need to shop the new market first. Now, once you shop the new market, then you can shop the pre-owned market, but you'll have something to compare it to. Got to know what you can get a new one for, or you'll overspend by, for that one or two year old one. All right. Um, Preston said, got the book. I'm, oh, we already read that. All right. Let's go uh, throw another one in. Go ahead. Throw another one in. Let's go. TikTok. How do I negotiate purchasing? a? All right. We already did that one. All right. I think, uh, okay, another one. TikTok. I'm going to look at new Audis this weekend. Plan on paying cash. What kind of things should I ask? Are you? How long are you keeping the car? How many years are you keeping the car, uh, Miley MK? Miley MK said, I'm going to look at new Audis this weekend, plan on paying cash. What kind of things should I ask? 
How many years you keep in the car? We never talk numbers in the dealership. Remember that? You're there to decide if you even want the vehicle. That's what we're there for. See, I have something in step four of my book. You'll hear me talk about this. It's called shopping, not buying. We don't buy, and I don't even think he's on here because he's not answering. But for those of you who have a similar question, let's break this down. When you go in to look at a car, if it's a new car or a lease, you're there to test drive and that's it. That's all you're there for. We're never going to talk numbers. We are never going to talk numbers in the dealership. Our deal is made from home. New cars, we make our deal through getting bids. We accept the bid from home. Many of you, you're going to have your new car delivered, which means 100% of your transaction will be done from home. Sometimes the dealer that wins the bid, they don't deliver. And so you're going to go pick it up. 95% of your transaction is done from home. Buying a used car, you're using those marketplace strategies that we talk about. That's in my book and that I went into detail with. And then you're finding your best deal. You're verifying fees. You're doing all of that from home. By the time you get to the dealership, the only thing you're doing is test driving the car and you're locking the deal up. Deal is done from home. We are not going into dealers looking for a deal, to make a deal. Our leverage is at home. That's where we can talk to multiple dealers. That's when we can get multiple options. You have no leverage inside a dealership. You're going to get emotional. Some of you are, and you're going to be like, oh, and you make a mistake, you overpay, and you can't compare. So we are only there to test drive. That's what you're there for. Go drive the car. See if you like the car. If you do, get a card, come home, get offers from home. That's it. And when you do this, you'll start enjoying the process. See, sometimes people say to their, you know, their children, hey, y'all. Hey, guys, I got some exciting news this weekend. You know what we're going to do? What, Daddy? We're going to go out and we're going to look at cars. You know, we need a new car and we're going to go. And I got three cars. We're going to go and we're going to test drive this one. I want you all to see in it. Make sure you all feel good in it. And then we're going to go drive this one. Then we're going to go drive this one. And then we'll come home. And we'll talk about it. Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now you go there. You're test driving, sticking to the plan until dad gets looped in. Hey. You know, we got incredible deals today. You know, today is our big sale for the month. Oh, really? What's what kind of sale? Well, the owner said, you know, we're way behind on um, we're way behind our goals. So he basically told us this morning, anybody who comes in today, like we're not turning away any reasonable offer. Oh, wow. OK. Um, You know, I was planning on going to look for some other cars. Is this something that'll be here like uh, after the weekend? Actually, the owner said it was only today. In fact, he said we was going to sell 10 cars. We already sold seven. So, you know, you know, once once we hit 10, he's not going to be as aggressive anymore. Oh, man. OK, son. now your kids are sitting over there. They're by the door. Dad, I remember we were going to see the next car. Wait, hold on. Hold, hold on one second. But, you know, what type of deals you think we could get? Two hours, three hours later. Taking the car home, not going to get your best price. You got you got sucked in. That'll never work for you if you. That'll never work on you if you just follow. And some of you, you're quiet. And some of you quiet because you're like, "Dang, Deshaun, that was me. That's how I did my last car." <laughs> With better strategies, you get better results. What I want you to understand is that the old way you've been taught to shop, I want you to completely unlearn that. Scrap it, throw it out the window. There's no guesswork when you're using what I'm telling you. It's going to be a much better experience. You're going to save much more money and you're going to have price assurance. You're not going to leave with your car. Oh, look, Ray Ray said that was me, my last three leases. So that's called discounting the purchase price. Uh, uh, that's called discounting your shopping experience. You're about to make a $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 transaction, some of you. You should not be discounting your shopping experience. Shopping is deciding what you want. That's your test drive. That's looking at options. That's, you know, but we're in and out for 20, 25 minutes and, 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 and we enjoy it. We do not let anybody talk numbers over at a dealership.
if you stick to that rule, you'll you'll enjoy it. They'll be trying to catch you. You'll be dodging them like Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> say what you want to say about Floyd, man. He can dodge and dance. They'll be like, man, can you just sit down? No, I mean, can I get you five minutes? Five minutes? No, actually, I'm in the car already. Honey, start the car. <laughs> hey, but I appreciate your service. Hey, can I get your car? Because if we do like this, we will give we'll, we'll reach out to you. So you so you know we'll reach out to you and give you a shot. Okay, you you sure, man? We got tons of we got great deals. Just no, no problem. Don't believe the game, y'all. So unlearn it. All of this is in my book. I want you to use this process. It's it's normally ninety seven dollars, but it's part of our new release. It's seventy five percent off. It'll be in your inbox. That's part of my multiple marketplace strategy. This is when you're in control. This is when no one can force you. You don't have anything to think about because you're not talking. Everything's done by email. So you can have my book, your copy in your inbox, in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio, 75% off for uh, 30 minutes. Get your copy for $24 and use this stuff. All right, Jack said, I got the book. Wonderful. Good, good. Does the book give you a one-on-one -on -one phone call with you too for $24? Absolutely not. And I don't do one-on-one -on -one phone calls with anybody. No disrespect. Uh, I've been blessed. I can help thousands of people. That's what I do. I help lots of people at once. Your situation is not unique. As much as you think it's unique, there's hundreds of people, many on this particular broadcast, that are in the same situation as you. So being that there's no unique situations, there's no reason for one-on-ones. All you got to do is just use the process, trust my process, and get offers. And last thing before we leave, there is no, this isn't building a rocket ship. Getting multiple offers is something that is not hard to do. You just haven't been in the habit of doing it. This isn't something you guys say, oh, I hope this works. You're not doing an experiment here. You're getting multiple offers from lots of dealerships and you're seeing lots of options and you're picking the best one. I'm just giving you a system to do that in 45 minutes. Do you know what I'm saying? So this isn't like, oh, okay, all right, I hope I don't fail a test. I'm going to school and then I got to learn this stuff and then I got to take a test and I hope I don't fail. No, this is literally multiple offers. And once you realize the simplicity of it, you'll be like, dad, how wasn't I shopping like this before? That's how it is. All right, so grab your copy. Shout out to everybody who shared. Shout out to everybody who jumped on the broadcast. Use it. I'll see y'all in the next one. A lot of good questions today. Have fun today. I'll see y'all next time. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm -hmm. Welcome, everybody. We're calling this Car Shopping Secrets, and we're going to call this the warm-up because we have a great show prepared for you guys where we're going to be actually uh, doing two experiences. One is going to be this live experience. So those of you guys who are actually available for um, the live experience will be broadcasting live uh, four days a week, 12 Eastern time and three. So we want to make sure we're catering to people on the West Coast, East Coast, uh, Central time, Mountain time, give you guys time to come on live, get your questions answered live. But then at the same time, um, we're going to broadcast uh, the show at 5.30 and at 8.30. So for those of you who are not able to join us live, you will be able to uh, catch the show once we actually broadcast it. So uh, if, you've, uh, if you've been uh, with us for the last couple of days while we've been testing about a week and a half, it's been great. Shout out to the people who've been with us during this first couple of days of tests. And uh, the response has been great. We've had probably three to four to sometimes 500 people join us live on all four platforms. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is what we've been doing, rapid fire Q&A, making sure that you have all your questions answered. And um, so feel free to start shooting them off. I did want to give you all. And first of all, let me not act like anyone knows me. Um, you may not know me. My name is Deshaun. I'm publicly known as Deshaun, the auto advisor. I spent 14 years in the car business. And now what I do is teach people like you how to save the most money, all the money that you should be saving whenever you want to buy or lease a car. And also, I show you where the hidden money is, because there's a lot of money hidden in your car deals that you have not seen. And so that's what we do. So let's get it. Let's get it going. 
um, shoot the first question in. I got my man Dolan moderating. So we'll be pulling questions from every platform, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook. So kick it. And oh, shout out to the sharers. Could everybody who shares do what you do? Help us spread this message. Hit that share button or tag one person. They'll definitely thank you. All right, Dolan, shoot the first question up. This is from Instagram. Is a down payment necessary? Not at all. Now, down payment, not necessary. If you can find a car for the budget you want without a down payment, do it. Now, let's not confuse that with down payments being illegal because that's just not true. Some of you may have found out the hard way or some of you may have just Googled because who saw that video that went viral talking about down payments are illegal? It was one of the worst videos to ever go viral. Talking about truth and lending, totally wrong. If you just Google, type that law into Google, you would have seen that law had nothing to do with down payments. So I don't want you going into a dealership looking foolish and then marching out thinking, well, they're lying to me. So no, down payments aren't necessary. When you shop for cars the way I'm going to teach you and the way you should be shopping is no down payment. Because the good thing about shopping for your offers with no down payment is you can actually see what the car costs. You can actually see what the car costs when you're not putting money into the deal. Sometimes they confuse you or you can get confused thinking you're getting a deal because you're putting money into the deal and you're not really seeing it. You're like, oh, my payment's only $400 a month and you're not seeing the overall. So whenever we shop our leases, we always shop our lease offers with no down payment. And whenever we shop, whenever we're not leasing, if we're purchasing, we are always doing our own budgeting between the bank, not between the dealer. The dealer's job is to win the bid and sell us this car because they beat all their competition. Our job is to do our budgeting on our own, separate from the dealer. All right, go ahead, Dolan, shoot them up. Oh, for everybody who just jumped on, if you don't know, my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is officially available. It is available at 75% off for our launch. It's normally $97, but you can get a copy of it. Everything I teach is in that book. Everything you see in my videos on social media is in that book. But the thing about it is it's all in one place and it's step by step. So you don't have to worry about guesswork. All the guesswork is taken out. So if you want your copy, it's 75% off for the next 30 minutes. While you're on this broadcast, click the, click the link in my TikTok bio or click the link in my Instagram bio, or you can go to uh, Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next question up. Everybody type your questions. We'll get to everybody. Well, we'll get to as many as possible. I don't want to say we get to everybody. And someone else is going to ask you a question. I guarantee it if you just stay on long enough. Can I return my lease early? You can't. Uh, this is from TikTok. You can't without paying a penalty. You can't because you've contracted for 36 months, 39 months. Hopefully you've never did a four year lease, but you've contracted and you have payments due. So if you go drop off that lease, you're going to have a payment. You're going to get billed for all of those payments. The only thing you can do is you could do what I call an equity assessment. We talk about this in my book. My book is seven steps. And some of you have seen this video. I posted tons of video about tons of videos about the uh, equity assessment. What it is, is you're finding out how much you owe and then you're finding out how much the, the how, what your best offer is on that car. And that's not an offer from a dealership. That's an offer from people who pay cash for cars and typically pay more than you'd get if you trade it. These are CarMax, Carvana, Driveway, um, AutoNation, uh, CarGuru, Sell My Car, and um, you could you could throw you could throw um, uh, there's one more you could throw we 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 like to get at least six offers uh, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. So anybody who's thinking I want to try to get out of my car early, the only way you can get out without losing a ton of money is you must know your equity position. If you can break even, you can get out of that vehicle anytime you want. If you can make a profit, even better. All right, go ahead, Dolan. 
Uh, this is from Instagram. Hi, I don't have a trade in and I'm a cash buyer. I want to buy, not lease. What's the best strategy to get a good deal? Okay, so you're gonna skip from step one, step two. All right, so let's determine what you, what you, what you, what your budget is. Your budget's gonna. A lot of who's ever wondered should I purchase new or used? If you've ever wondered should I purchase new or used, type me in the comments. I'm gonna tell you the biggest indicator for somebody like this who, who's, who. This question from Instagram. Biggest indicator is budget. Now, there's two types of people. If you could afford a new car that has everything you need in it and you can and you can get it new, then we'll go that route. And what your best way to get a, a great deal on a new car is to get multiple offers. You must get five because 80 percent of dealers are overpriced. The only way you're going to see that is when you're at home or when you, I, I would, I'm not going to recommend you be there because you're going to say, Deshaun, how can I get five offers? You can't if you're in dealerships. If you're just driving from dealer to dealer, that's ineffective. You could either do it. I'm going to give you a manual way to do it. And then my way is the totally at home using, using the internet. Um, manually, you'd go and you'd go into one dealer, you'd get an offer, you'd come home, and then you reach out to you reach out to as many dealerships as necessary to get five offers. And I would go direct to the sales manager. I would call the dealership, ask for a sales manager, and try to cut through the through the garbage. I wouldn't be talking to salespeople. In fact, what you're going to find is if you use what I'm teaching, you'll probably never talk to a salesperson about numbers. Uh, definitely not verbally. Now, my way, what I do is I have something in my book called the 25 to 5 strategy. And what we do is we connect with 25 dealers online. We we typically see that out of 25 dealers, we do this in 20 minutes because we're copying and pasting. Very simple. Once you let 25 dealers know what you're looking for, about 10 to 12 will probably have a car. And then out of that 10 to 12, you can probably get five to seven offers. And one of those offers is going to blow all the other offers away. And that's how you buy your vehicle 100% from home or either 90% if you're going to go pick it up. Now, if your budget doesn't, some people say, Deshaun, well, what if I don't want a new car? If you can afford both, it's really a matter of do you want to treat yourself or do you want to go major value? Major value might be, all right, I'll go pre-owned. Now, if you can't afford new, because you're paying cash, you might can't get everything you want in a new in a new car. Paying cash, you got to go pre-owned it, and in which case you're going to the marketplaces and you're going to find your car there. We have three things we use to narrow down. Anybody who's shopping for a used car, type you in the comments. Three things you want to remember in the narrowing down process. First thing is title history. Second thing is service records. Third thing is accident history. That's how you narrow down from a bunch of cars to your top three to five. And once you get that top three to five, you need to get the window sticker. I teach a secret strategy that only people who learn from me know where we, if we can't get the car facts on the marketplace, we go to the dealer's website to get the car facts because we wanna see what that vehicle, we wanna get that car facts. We can't use auto check because unfortunately auto check doesn't show the service records. So that's the three step narrowing down process. Once we narrow it down to our top choices, then we're going to get the window sticker to see what the original price was. And then we may, so then we make sure there's no bogus fees. So it all in all, it's a five-step process to, to narrowing down and getting our best used car in the market. Because the name of the game, who knows when it comes to market value, what are we concerned about? Who knows? If you've been on the broadcast, when it comes to market value, what is always our goal? Whether we're buying, leasing, whether we're buying new, buying used, what is our goal? When it comes to market value, see if anybody knows. Let's see. I give people some time. I'll give you five seconds and then I'm gonna tell everybody. Let me see. Okay. Below market value. So I never want you got it, Kim. Very close, under market value. That's it. So I don't ever want you to think about or have these conversations with people when we're talking about market value. That's not interesting to us. What's interesting to us is making sure we're buying below market. OK, that's the only thing. OK, go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next question. For everybody who just jumped on, could you please 
tag one person. If you're in the sharing, if you're in the financial literacy, appreciate you. They will thank you. And they'll also be mad at you if they find out that you've been listening to me using this stuff, saving all this money, and you didn't tell them. You don't want that. So tag one person. All right. Uh, this is from TikTok. What do you think about buying from Tesla? Um, Tesla takes the negotiation out of it for the price of the car. Um, you know, if if you do your, we, we, you, you always, before you think about buying any car, y'all, realize there's some bad cars out there. You need to make sure that you are actually, you're doing your initial quality check. We go to Google, we type in the year to make the model, initial quality, we scan that first page. Initial quality is the first 90 days of the vehicle's life. If there's any problems, if owners are complaining, if the data is showing that it's a bad car, there's electrical problems, you'll typically see it there. Then we wanna check reliability. That's the first three years. So anybody who's buying or leasing a new car, you need to be checking initial quality and reliability. Initial quality is the first 90 days, reliability is the first three years. Now, if you're gonna buy a Tesla for the long term, you're gonna type in longevity, type in year, make, model, longevity. And you know you need to make sure, that's it. Once you find out it's a good car, then it's a matter, of, there's no negotiation with Tesla, but you still need to make sure you're getting bids for your loan. Very important. We want multiple people. Some of you were on with us on the last show. We talked about the bank bidding war. You need to have multiple banks and credit unions bidding for your interest rate. We don't choose one. Everyone who we do business with must win the bid. Now, and, and that's how we guarantee we get below market everything. I don't just want a below market purchase. I want below market interest. If everyone's paying 5%, I want the lowest interest rate available. And the only way I'm going to get that is to have multiple banks and credit unions bid for my for my business. All right, go ahead, Dolan, shoot it through. And if y'all want to go any deeper, deeper on that, you just let me know. We can go deep on the bank bidding war. You must, you, you must do that correctly. And when you see how much money you save, how much money you've been given to these banks and interest or your credit union, and you start to see one point on an interest rate literally could be a thousand dollars. Depending on the price of the car, if it's a $50,000 car, one point can be more. So if you're not taking shopping your interest rate as serious as you're taking shopping for your car loan, I mean, as serious as you're taking shopping for your car, you're missing it. You're missing money. OK, but we're not going to do that anymore. What's the maximum yearly mile? This is from Instagram. We're taking questions from all four platforms. We're live on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. So Dolan's pulling all the questions. What's the maximum yearly mileage where leasing is appropriate? Um, I'd say I'd say thirty thousand. I'd say thirty thousand. Uh, but, you know, I teach two strategies for short term high mileage driver. If you drive more than eighteen thousand miles a year, I want you to type HM. HM. See, we're talking to tons of different people. Everything we teach is custom. Everything I'm going to teach you is going to be for you. There's no point in learning from somebody who's trying to teach a regular driver and you a high mileage driver. Most of what they're learning is not going to work for you and you're going to be frustrated when you try it and it doesn't work. So let's talk specifically for a second. Somebody asked all the high mileage drivers. You need to first determine my my book goes over seven steps. My whole process is seven steps. Step one is to ask yourself, how many years am I going to keep the car? That's going to show you whether you should purchase or lease, because if you're not keeping the car long enough to outlive and let the depreciation cool off, you're losing thousands of dollars in depreciation. Now, step seven is delivery. So by the time you get to step seven, you're picking up your car. If you don't put your deal on the right foundation by determining if you're a short term person, you ain't keeping that car eight years, you're a short term person. Eight, 10, 15 years, you're a long term keeper. For that car, you might have one long term car and one short term car in the same household. So it's not about the person. It's about each car. So once you determine that, if you say, Deshaun, I'm not keeping eight years, there's two strategies for high mileage drivers so that y'all can stop putting all this money in the cars, having tons of negative equity. I've been working with y'all for years. I spent 14 years in the business, in the car business, and I've seen the damage that high mileage drivers are faced with. Ten to fifteen thousand dollars of negative equity. Why? You have these five and six year loans, like regular people, like regular drivers, but you're not a regular driver. 
So when you go to trade your carbon or replace it, rather, you now have tons of negative equity because you still owe two to three years on your loan, but your car has 150 or 200,000 miles on it. The better plan to not take those kind of losses is to either do a high mileage lease. You're going to see that when you and, and some of you have heard the story, I've talked about this where I first learned this when I was working for Hyundai for a couple of weeks. I was a manager at Hyundai. I ended up leaving because the owner ended up going to jail. Wasn't the right place. You talk about a highway dealer. <laughs> I've worked for a, a highway dealer, but this was like highway in every sense of the word, you know, like so, you know, it hits the owner end up going to jail when when the owner of the dealership gets indicted. You know, so I so but I witnessed this high mileage lease customer. He was returning his lease prior to that. I didn't even understand high mileage leases. So he was dropping off his car, 75, almost 75,000 miles. He said, listen, Deshaun, I've been doing this for years. I'm like, this is amazing to me. He said, this is what I pay. I pay a little extra per month to get the 30, to get 25,000 miles a year. Every time I come in, I drop it off. And I was like, wow, I got to tell everybody I know about this because it was way uh, less money invested than had he purchased that Hyundai and just took a loan on it or even paid cash and just depreciated the heck out of it and brought it back with 75,000. So you could do a high mileage lease. That's one strategy I teach, but you need to shop for your lease with standard, no matter what you shop for. I don't care if you're driving 15, 18, 10,000 miles per year, 25,000 miles per year. You always shop with 12 because when you shop your offers with 12, you can now judge the offers your goal is to find the dealer that's going to win the bid. They're going to beat everybody else. And then you have that dealer adjust the mileage because you've identified the honest dealer. You have them adjusted to 25 or 30 or whatever you need. And then you make your choice. We've had I've had tons of people who switched this model. And what it allowed them to do is actually see how much their car was costing. You don't know how much you're losing until you do this. When you do this and you're like, wow, I only pay this. It's 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 powerful to know how much money is coming out of your bank account every year or every three years for your car. High mileage lease is one option. Now, here's the second option. Second option is for people who are like Deshaun. I kind of want to have a nice car, though. I want to I don't want to necessarily. Some people say, Deshaun, I, I put tons of miles on my car and I want to get me something nice now. What should I do? This is the second strategy. This is also in my book. I call this two cars, one payment. What we're going to do is we're going to use one car or we're going to use the car we own. That's going to be our mileage car. So we're going to, we're not going to go lease. We're going to buy a car or keep our car, pay it off. And then as soon as that car is paid off, we're going to go lease our nice car and we're going to split the mileage between the two. So I might do 15,000 a year on my mileage car and I might do a lease for 12,000 and keep my payment manageable. So I got one payment, but I can have, I could drive as much as I want. I, I, do, I do, you know, my nice car a couple of days a week. I do my mileage car a couple of days a week. I got one payment, keeping a lot of money in my household, no negative equity ever. Both of those plans for the short term high mileage driver are absolutely wonderful. You just choose which one you work. Okay. That's what we do. Now, this is all everything I teach y'all is in my book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book, so it could be in your inbox in literally minutes. It's 75% off while we're on the broadcast for the next 30 minutes. Just click the link in my TikTok bio, click the link in my Instagram bio, or go to Deshaun'sBook.com and get your 75% off. Use this. Now, every, now, there's no hidden info in there that you won't see in my hundreds of social media videos. But the thing about it is some of you don't want to, you see, what we, yo, it's all in there. You don't want to be looking at high mileage videos and leasing videos and used car videos trying to find what's for you. If you could do that, go do it. It's all there. If you want it all in one spot, step by step, then grab your copy of 75% off. Go ahead, Dola, shoot the next question in. All right. How do you get the banks to bid? Are you telling banks you're shopping around? You can it's not usually going to change their terms because banks usually have a specific rate term they're going to do. Now, what you do is you're not letting, we're talking about the bank bidding war. Could y'all keep shooting the lights up on TikTok? I appreciate y'all. I see y'all. 
And thanks to all the sharers. I appreciate everybody who's sharing this. So you are not letting anyone run your credit until after you have agreed to purchase. This is very important. No one needs your credit. They will. They might make you think they do. And if you give them your credit, if you put your social security number on anything, because some of you have to own this, you don't want to, if you, I've had people that wrote me, wrote, uh, DM me and said, Deshaun, they ran my credit. No one can run your credit without your permission. You must give them your social security number in order to do it. So you don't give them any of that until you have agreed to purchase something. So once you've agreed, which means somebody has won the bid, you've seen all the offers. If you're shopping for a used car, you've seen all the options. Now you are locking up your deal. You know, I'll take it. Now what you're going to do is take that purchase agreement. You're going to go home and you are going to call your bank or your credit union. You're going to go on online uh, uh, online auto loan banks. There's community credit union. There's Lightstream. You're going to let everybody get a shot at this because there's something called the rate window where the credit bureaus allow you up to 45 days. Now, if you do it this way, it'll only take you two days, maybe even one. Here's what you're doing. Uh, an unlimited amount of lenders can access your credit with a hard pull within that window. When the window closes, it will only weigh on your credit as one hard inquiry. You will see the inquiries, but in terms of the effects on your score, it will only weigh, it will only weigh as one hard inquiry. So that's what you want. And after you get those bits, somebody's going to win that. Uh, this, is, uh, this is round two. Round one is actually when we check to see if there's any special interest rates. Because once you're shopping for your car, you always, if you're going to get a loan, you always want to check to see if there's any special interest rates from the manufacturer. 0%, 0.99%. That's, that's, that I call round one. The bank bidding war is three rounds. Round one is special interest rate. If you see 0%, everything else is obsolete. If you see 0.99%, Everything else is obsolete. There's no need for round two and three because no one's going to beat it. Once you get to round two, you're at home, your bank, your credit union, online lenders bidding. Now, whoever wins that, you're then going to call the dealership because your car is on hold and say, hey, I just got X percent from my bank, my credit union. If you guys can beat it, I give you the business. They're going to appreciate that. They've already won the bid, worked hard to beat their competition to sell you the car. Now you're giving them a chance to see if they can beat your, uh, the other banks. And that finance manager is going to call their banks and say, hey, look, I need this interest rate. Can you can you beat this? I got it. I'm trying to beat this. Now you have people fighting for you to win your business. And they might call you and say, listen, I couldn't beat it. You got a good rate. You got a great rate, in which case it gives you peace of mind of knowing that no bank could beat this rate. That means you got a below mark. You got the lowest rate in the market. Or they might call you and say, hey, good news. You had a great rate, but I beat it. I got such and such to beat it. And now not only does that save you money, they can actually save you time because you don't have to go through your bank. So that's the bank bidding war. Takes literally 45 minutes to do. And you, the money you're going to save and the control you're going to have is incredible. That's the bank bidding war. That's how we do it. You must do it right. If you don't do it right, then you did it wrong. <laughs> Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next one. All right, come on in, everybody. Tag one person. I'm telling you, you don't want your friends mad at you when they find out you've been you've been on this live and you ain't tell them about me. It's, and they buying a car. They might be buying a car this weekend, struggling, and you sitting up here not telling your friends about it. <laughs> Go ahead, Dolan. All right, everybody, just keep typing your questions. I got Dolan pulling questions from all four platforms. All right, this is TikTok. I have a lease with no equity, high mileage. Should I return or keep? Mrs. Marshall, very rarely is it going to make sense to keep your lease. Because like I always say, y'all, when you're buying your lease, what are you buying? Who knows? When you're buying your lease, if you buy your lease out, what are you buying? What type of car? Who knows? I'm going to keep, uh, <laughs> look, Justin said, greedy with this knowledge, right? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so you're buying a used car. That's what you're buying. 
So when you go from leasing, yes, my great day there. Thanks for tap, tapping in. So when you're buying, you're when you're buying a used car, it has to be a serious shift in how you're going to approach when you go from having a new car, which is a lease that you're paying a little bit of money for, typically almost you know, almost hassle free because you're always under warranty and you're driving a brand new car, latest and greatest technology, latest and greatest safety features to go from that to purchasing a used car. You need to be clear that something has changed. Here's an example. You know what? I just want to buy something. I want to pay it off and I want to keep it forever. If that's you, then buy the lease, because if you don't, what you're going to find, if that's not you, what you're going to find is you're going to put this time, let me tell you. Let me tell you a quick, quick story of how I found out buying your lease was horrible. You know, and and all of this stuff that I'm teaching is from me being in a dealership, seeing horrible situations, asking questions, and then saying, "Oh, that's how we got into that situation." So somebody coming to the dealership, they got a five year old car, and I look at them and they're like, "Hey, um, you know, I'm looking to trade this. I want to get something new," and I'm like, "Okay, cool. Got a five year old car." If you're trading this, I probably I'm going to talk to you about leasing because you don't understand leasing. You paid a lot of money. So now I'm thinking like, OK, you had it. How long have you had it? Oh, I bought it brand new. Perfect. All right. So it's probably almost paid off. Wouldn't you think that a car that somebody's had for five years, if they if they if they got it when it was new, shouldn't it be the paid off or almost paid off? Right. So I ask them, what, you know how much you owe on it? No, I don't. I don't really know. I don't know the exact. No problem. So I have the used car manager go out, look at the car. Used car manager might come back and say, okay, I think the car's worth 18. All right, perfect. So now I call the person's bank and I'm like, hey, I'm calling for Mr. Johnson. I'm trying to find out, you know, how much he owes because he's interested in replacing this car. We want to pay it off for him. And they say, okay, yeah, his, his, his balance is $18,300. Now that I'm totally shocked. Just like some of you, like, wait, hold on. How could he have had the car five years and he still owes, he still owes 18 grand? And I, I would ask him, Mr. Johnson, they're saying you still owe 18,000. How is this possible? And he's like, oh, well, what happened was I had bought, I had leased the car. And then at the end of the three-year lease, I bought it. And, and, I, and, and I took out a loan, which is what most people are going to do. And it's usually a five or six-year loan, usually six. So you got three years to lease it that he's paying, and then you got six years, which means a total of nine years of payments on the same car. Very rarely will this ever make sense. And so what you want to do is start looking and saying, the only way it makes sense for me to purchase this lease is if I'm going to keep this thing a long time, because at the end of the day, I'm probably going to give about five or six, I'm probably going to give about eight or nine years of payments on the same car, which is just, I mean, would any of you, any, we got a bunch of smart people on here. We probably got about 400 people between all the platforms. Would any of you buy a car and take out a nine year loan? Would you volunteer for that? No, look, I see no's all over. That's what you're doing in most times when you're buying your lease out. Now, if you're gonna pay cash for the lease at the end, okay, that's different. I still wouldn't do it. I would still look to this to shop for an aggressive lease and shop for a new lease. Most people are buying their leases out because they don't know how to find a good deal on the next lease. That's a fixable problem. So, like I said, rule of thumb, if you're going to buy your lease, just say, all right, I'm keeping this car. I love this car so much. You know what? I leased it. I fell in love with this thing. I'm going to keep this thing until the wheels fall off. And that's a reason to buy the lease. All right. Go ahead, next next question, Dolan. You know we gotta go deep sometimes. So if you wanna, listen, if you want everything I teach in one spot, I put out my new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Some people say, Deshaun, why isn't it a print book? It's because everything that changes in the car market, I have to update. If we're using a script, cause you, you see my scripts are in the book. So you're when you're typing, you're typing what Deshaun is saying. It's not what Judy's saying. No offense to you, Judy. I want you to use what I say and then judge it. You know, you want to add your own stuff to it later, then do that. And you probably won't. But in order for me to keep updating, like Vroom went out of business two months ago, 
if I had books in print, I wouldn't have been able to update. Now you got a book that's no longer relevant or that part is it. Digital books, I can update it on the fly to make sure whenever you go to use that book, the information in it is totally relevant. All right. And for our launch is 75 percent off. It's normally ninety seven dollars. If you if for the next 30 minutes, you can go to the uh, you can go to my TikTok bio, my Instagram bio or Deshaun's book.com. Or if you're watching on TV, scan the QR code with your phone and grab you 75 percent off. OK, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one. All right. Let's keep the questions coming in. All right. This is from Instagram. How can I lease without a high down payment? Very simple. Don't believe that you need a high down payment. In fact, don't believe that you need a down payment at all. Here's what you should be doing. Everybody who's going to be shopping for a lease, you should be once you decide what you want, you should be getting your offers with first month's payment total out of pocket. This doesn't I don't want you to use the words down payment anymore. I want you to I want you to use total out of pocket. When you say total out of pocket, it's hard to mix up in the car business. When I was in the dealership, what I saw is the term down payment. Didn't include taxes, fees, some of you, I mean, who, it, it, you, you know. You may have experienced a time where you told the dealer, I only want to put two thousand down. Now you get your offer back or you see the end of the final paperwork. Sometimes, I mean, the worst dealers will even let you go into the finance office and you're thinking I'm putting two thousand down. And what happens when you get there? <laughs> you can just type a mad emoji if you on your if you on your mobile phone. They tell you what? Yeah, two thousand down. But how are you going to pay the taxes? Right. Yeah, it's 2000 down, but then you got to pay your first month's payment and your motor vehicle fees. Right. We don't want that to ever happen, which means we have to be very intentional with the language we use. Total out of pocket. Look, <laughs> I see you. Good time. Total out of pocket means this is what I said. The total out of pocket. You could also use total do at signing. Those two, two terms can do can be used you know, interchangeably, but you're going to shop your lease offers. You are going to tell them what, how you're going to customize. The lease is custom. The mileage is custom. I know who, who was taught they limit you with the lease mileage. Be honest. Just type me. If you were taught that they limit you, like, okay, some people were taught you can only get 10,000 miles a year with a lease. Some people were taught they pick the mileage on the lease. Some people were taught they pick the down payment on the lease. All right, be honest. All right, all right. So we're gonna just like good news. All none of that's true. You pick the mileage on the lease. You can get almost any mileage you want. Most most manufacturers. We talked about it a couple minutes ago. Will go up to thirty thousand miles a year on the mileage. So you get the mileage you need. The mileage you're gonna use. And then the down payment you customize. So when now if you leave it to them then they'll customize it for you. But when we go in and get our offers, the way you're getting your offers is first month's payment total out of pocket. And you're going to do that with at least five dealers. If you're doing it the manual way I mentioned earlier, you're going to have five sales managers work up the offers for you. If you're doing it my way, we're connecting, you're using my 25 to five strategy, you're connecting with 25 dealers online, and we are telling them what we want. And and we're going to tell them this is how I want the lease offer presented to me. First month payment only. And that's it. Most of look, look, let's um look at Danielle. Danielle, she leased her Audi. Look, it, you, you can't see it on TikTok. You will be. If you're watching the rebroadcast, the rebroadcast we put out later, 530. If you're watching the rebroadcast, then you'll see uh Danielle, 550 a month. First payment down. Included maintenance. Her Audi was forty four thousand one seventy five. Now I know that sounds crazy, but that that was an offer that a dealer had to beat. That that wasn't just her. She didn't go into one dealer and they said, "Yeah, we'll give you this Audi, brand new Audi for you know five fifty a month." She shot multiple offers like we teach. This is in my private Facebook group. I have a couple people that I coach around the country, and we always report our deals. Most of the deals y'all are ever going to see me share will always be with zero down, first month payment down. Because here's the thing to remember if you can find a car and get the deal you want with no money down, or you know, you want to you want to do that. 
You only want to put money down when you found your deal, but you want to lower the payment a little bit. That's the only time for money down. If it's in your budget with no money down, you know, drive that car off the lot. And that's what a lot of people do, especially with leases. Uh, all right, Dolan, shoot the next one in. Let me put the banner back up. All right, keep the questions coming, y'all. We're pulling questions from everywhere. And make sure you are telling your friends, meet us live 12 and 3 Eastern time. They can meet us anywhere they're at on any of these four platforms. If you see somebody and they're like, listen, I got to buy a car soon. You say, listen, Deshaun is doing this show. This is God, Deshaun, all about it. He's doing this live show 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock Eastern time, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right, tell them to come. Or they can watch the rebroadcast that we put out in the evening. All right, uh, this is YouTube. Well, I have to purchase the book again when you make updates. Great question, Serenity. Nope, absolutely not. Listen, y'all. And look, God bless. I'm not talking about any other author. If there's some, look, because honestly, the reason I did a digital book is to prevent that. Most authors, what? How many books have we seen? Volume nine, you know, 2028 edition. You get what I'm saying? It's because the book is in print. If the book is in print, the only way that I can update it is to print a new version, which you have to buy. But in the case of digital, y'all, when you open that file, you could open it a year from now. If I change anything in that book, if there's one word change because it's not relevant, if there's one website that we're no longer using or there's a new website that comes out that we're going to add to our arsenal, it's going to be in there. So that's the beautiful thing about a digital book. One time, and you get it for 70 That's why at $97, it's a phenomenal value. We had tons of people pay $97 who wrote me and said, Deshaun, this is the best investment. I have one of the best books I ever bought. Um, but at 75% off, it's just like, wow. And, you know, enjoy. Even better. All right, Dolan, shoot the next one in. Uh, can you get a lease without the disposition fee or lease turning fee? That's a great question. So uh, disposition fee, y'all, is a fee to get the, when you drop off your lease, the dealer doesn't own the car anymore. I know some of you may have been, you know, you may have thought, cause I've saw people that said, uh, man, I can't afford the car. I just went and dropped it off at the dealer. I, I, went, I took the, car, the dealer back their car. It's not the dealer's car anymore. A lot of these things, the, the, I get a better deal for paying cash where they originate from. It's from the times where the dealers used to make the, uh, they used to have in-house loans. In-house loans. Wait, hold on. Hold on one second. There's a, there's a, there's somebody on TikTok that just said, that's the reason I won't lease. Dolan, pull that question in next because I want to know what they're talking about over here. Okay. Because listen, I, I pull that question in next. But, um, when they originated, when they originated, um, you know, banks used to get, dealers used to give loans, dealers used to have the car. So they were the ones calling you, hey, you missed the payment. And so people think that the dealer owns the car. Once the dealer sells you the car nowadays, the bank is in, the bank owns the car. They're the ones coming. So when you drop off your lease, you have to pay a fee if you're leaving that manufacturer to go to another one, because that lease has that car has to get back to the bank. So that's just a that's just now if you sell the car, you don't pay the fee. If you sell your lease, if, if there's equity or if you could break even, you know, we teach the equity assessment process, then you don't pay the fee. But if you need to drop off your lease, then, yes, that's a fee that it's it's a it's a legitimate cost. All right. Pull that question in. What what are we talking about? Uh, because I've always been told the mileage. OK, so are you saying, Latasha, that you 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 you. Because she said, that's the reason I won't lease, because I've always been taught, been taught the mileage was limited. So are you saying that you've learned that the mileage is not limited and now you are like you have good information? Or are you saying you're still operating with that information? Because we just went over that over the last 10 minutes. We've talked about how the mileage is not limited. You pick the mileage. And frankly, if you are not keeping your cars eight years, you're all you've already lost thousands of dollars not leasing. Unless you tell me, Deshaun, I buy five thousand dollar cars on Facebook Marketplace. I only I buy seven thousand, ten thousand. There's something, you know, that's a strategy. So if you're one of those people, you could disregard what I say about leasing versus buying, because that's a that's a strategy. My brother does that. He all he does is buy cars that he gets from three to ten grand. He'll put work into them and he he pays pennies to drive cars. But if that's not you, 
and you're not keeping, okay, she's still operating with that info. Okay. So what I would tell you, because I don't want to actually repeat something that we did, we said, we'll put the broadcast out at uh, 5.30 tonight. I will watch that part of the broadcast. You could watch it on YouTube, Instagram, wherever you're at. Um, but you don't um, you don't want to operate with that information. That's what we spent uh, the last 10 minutes kind of uh, dispelling. A lot of the information that you're operating with that's costing you is actually not accurate. And that's 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 the bad part. If it was true, keep moving. But you don't want to be moving with bad information. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. Then you, just, I think you just had one up from Facebook. But whichever one you pull in, it's fine. Uh, does credit change the one point five point five percent rule you preach about, and how much options you have to get a good loan? Uh, sure, certainly. Um, you typically want to be in that fair to high range when it comes to you know six seventy and up. That's typically, and here's what I say, you know, when people are buying a house, what do you typically do? If you know you're buying a house, you get ready to buy a house, right? There's people, some of you have bought a house and and, and didn't you tighten up the credit a little bit? Because you had a goal. Now, if you're in an emergency situation, then this is different. You get told, your car gets totaled, car gets stolen. These are emergency situations, totally understand. But if you're thinking about purchasing a car then, and you know that you're in that, you know, low 600 range or, you know, I would tell you to go to work on your credit. Follow Shonda Martin on she's on every platform. Road to 750 plus. Uh, you know, one day I hope to get her on here, uh, you know, as we start bringing in um, complimentary guests. There's a couple of people that I have in mind that I want to get that I want to introduce you all to that have just incredible information. But you should be learning from her. And get your credit up to that point where you could actually uh, get out of that manipulation zone. 670, 680, 690, you're in the safe range to get approved for uh, for most tier one leases. Um, and you're in the safe range to get approved for uh, for loans, you know. But if you're if you're uh, the, the, the less control you have over your car loan, the more you can be manipulated. So if you're in that other range of a lower range, then. You probably I teach people if you're not if you're not. All right. Some people don't have the credit to lease right now. That doesn't mean you go purchase a thirty thousand dollar car when you if you say Dag, if I had the credit, I would be leasing. The last thing you want to do is go and buy a 20 or 30 or forty thousand dollar car, because what that's going to do is bury you. You're going to pay higher interest. And then when you go to trade out in two years, which is so what I teach is you get the least expensive car you could get a loan on. You get a great car, but the least expensive car. You get a sacrifice car. I'm going to set myself up. I'm not going to go buy the big vehicle because I know in two years, I'm going to flip out of this into a brand new lease and I'm going to have that payment history. So when I go apply for my lease, I get approved. But if you go and get yourself the Dodge Charger with the Hemi engine or you want the Hellcat, Scat Pack, all, mm, you won't be leasing. And not only will you not be leasing, you'll be buried in that car in two years because the interest you're going to pay on it is going to delay any goals that you have financially. So you either could shine now and lose later. And you're really not shining when you're in a Hellcat with a with a 19 percent interest rate or 22 percent interest rate. You're not shining. You're very dull. So when we're going to talk about financial literacy, everything I'm saying is not going to be. Like, it's not going to be like, oh, that's what I want to hear. But it's going to be, yeah, that's what I need to hear. That's the smart move right there. All right. Um, go ahead, Dolan. Next question. Okay. Appreciate everybody. I see y'all sharing. I appreciate all the sharers. Thank y'all so much. And thank you to everybody who's sending gifts. I see y'all. Um, I appreciate you supporting the broadcast and this mission. I received mail from a dealership. They want to buy my car with top dollars. Can you explain what that means? They haven't even seen your car. So it's a marketing message. Who got who has dealers either emailing it? Look, look, now this question's from YouTube. All right. We're taking questions from all four platforms. So just keep typing. And while we're on, we'll be rotating. Who's got dealers calling them right now, blowing up your phone, saying, please bring your car in. If they just 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 type me if they're, if they're calling you, if they're emailing you or if you even got a letter saying we want to pay top dollar for your car. Look, OK, so <laughs> lots of you. All right. The reason why they want to do that is because they want to see, they want to be the first person that makes an offer on your car. They don't want you to see the other offers. So 
we never look a dealer is always the last offer for our car never our first so what you do this is our this is called the equity assessment many of you who learned from me already you've been on some broadcasts you got the book you've seen my videos equity assessment is once you decide whether you lease or buy that's step one step two is the equity assessment we got to find out what our current car is worth what is our position in it is it a positive where we could put some money in our pocket or is it a break even or is it a negative now on a lease you don't have a negative equity so it's not it's just you might not be able to make any money or break even but on a finance you can have negative equity so now you're just getting your offers from the cash buyers that we teach we talked about it i mentioned them earlier and then you're going to find out how much you owe so you want to know what your equity position is before anyone else tells you you never want to be on here talking about Deshaun. the dealer told me i don't have any equity you did that wrong we find out if we have equity and the way you do that is by calling your bank and getting your payoff and then getting offers from the online buyers that'll tell you right there if you have equity or not all right you it's you go ahead dolan shoot the next one up y'all see we're in control there's never anyone that's the reason why look hold on before you put that up let me show look i want to just show you some of these offers all right, I want to show you some of these deals because when you look at below market deals, this is this is Vincent. All right, Vincent got a three year old. Um, matter of fact, no, let's go to let's go to something where because that's a below market pre owned car deal. Let's go to do I have anything here with equity? I'll put some equity in. All right, when you look at something like this, like Charles got a Hyundai Palisade. This is probably all through the pandemic. This was the car that people overpaid for the most and they're still overpaying for it. When you look at this, he's leasing this. This is a $48,000 car, $48,595 to be exact. If you're watching on the rebroadcast, you'll be able to see this on TikTok. Everyone else, you can see this. He's paying $597 a month for a almost $50,000 car. Now, every $5,000, just so, so we can be clear on how much this car would have cost had he purchased it, because only a few people on here understand the magnitude of the money that comes out of your house when you purchase versus the magnitude of the money that stays in your bank account when you get a great lease deal. Had he purchased this car, every $5,000 is how much per month? Thank you, Coconut. I see you. He came in real quick. Every $5,000 is 100 bucks a month. So this Palisade, you have many people out here driving Palisades. They didn't put much money down, and they're paying, 100, they're paying 900 to 1100 bucks a month. If they put a lot of money down, like 15 grand, maybe they're paying like seven something, throwing ridiculous money at these cars. He's paying $597. So not only is the does the deal need to be on the right foundation, he would have never gotten anywhere near this. That's why I say if you if you were supposed to lease and you purchased, there's no way to get a great deal. Y'all see now what I mean when I say that? Look at Danielle. You saw Danielle earlier. Look at Kimberly with her Maserati. She's driving an $80, $86,000 Maserati and she's paying $968 a month. 36 months, an $86,000 Maserati. They sold it to her. First of all, she saved 20 grand. Getting multiple offers, she saved 20 grand. And her lease payment is $968 a month. Had she purchased that car, $66,000 was the selling price. That would be, what's that, 15 grand? That would be $1,300 a month, y'all. That would be $1,300 a month. So when, when you don't lease, when you should have leased, there's no way to get a great deal. So you got to put your deal on the right foundation. And then once your deal's on the right foundation, you're shopping multiple offers because you need to get the best offer in the market. You need to get the below market deal. All right. And this is all in my book. If y'all want to make sure you have everything step by step, Deshaun, I love the video. I don't even want to come back to a live anymore. I just want all the information in one spot for me. 
That's car shopping for people that hate car shopping. My new digital book, you can get it for 75% off for the next 30 minutes. Go to my TikTok bio. As long as that timer hasn't hit zero yet, you can get it. You won't pay the $97 price. And you can go to my Instagram bio or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com or you can scan the QR code. Either way, any one of those four ways, get your 75% off and use it. And make sure you make sure you DM me and write me with your deals. I want to see your deals. I want to hear your success stories. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next question up. We still got questions coming from every platform. This one's from Instagram. I bought a Lincoln, a 23 Lincoln Nautilus. I want to trade it in as I do not like it. I put $20,000 down. Can you trade it in or will I lose too much? Mm. All right. Y'all heard this question. Now, the thing about it is you're not going to have a lot of negative equity depending on how much you pay for the car. Now, I don't want to assume that because I don't know how good of a deal you got. Is it possible in the wake of the pandemic sales and the way people were overpaying during the, that you could have overpaid? Yeah, it's possible. But let's just assume you got a, you got a, you got a decent deal right? You're not going to have a lot of negative equity, but you're not going to get this money back. When you run, here's what I want you to do. I want you to call the bank, find out how much you owe. You'll, you're going to know in a matter of minutes how much of a hit you need to take. Call your bank, find out how much you owe and get your, get your online offers. Go to CarMax, go to Carvana, go to Driveway, go to AutoNation, go to KBB Instant Cash Offer, Go to Car Guru, sell my car, get those cash offers. Whoever's the highest, compare it to what you owe. Um, you're probably you're not going to like it at the end of the day, but that's going to help you choose whether. All right, can I live with this thing for a little bit more? Um, buying a car and trading it in in a year, two years, three years, four years, especially a new car, is just a it's just a big loss. It's a big loss. You must hate the car enough to take that loss. All right. But I want you to know what your equity position is. So you'll be able to see what you're going to do. And uh, because you put so much down, you, you like I said, you're probably not going to have negative equity. Um, but then once you look at how much you're getting back, you might that might that might make you say, man, do I really want to lose 15, 20 grand for a car that I only had for whatever? All right. So that's your first step. I mean, feel free to come in, chime in with another live. Uh, if you want to jump on the show, we'll be back. You know, we do two shows a day um today so if you want to come back if you want to do it we can talk about it later but that's that's always the first step y'all whenever you want to trade your car whenever you want to replace your car that's always the step equity assessment always all right this is instagram um can you sell a lease while still having remaining payments absolutely just follow the equity assessment process and then when you call your bank for a lease you're going to ask them do i have a third party restriction so you're going to get those offers that i just talked about with elizabeth and then you're going to call your bank and say, do I have a third party restriction? Now, if they say yes, that doesn't mean you can't sell the lease. That means it, you're restricted on who you can sell it to. You can sell it, but you can only sell it to a dealer of the same brand. We still get bids, but now we get bids from used car managers. So when we have a third party restriction, I've helped tons of people. David is probably the first person I can remember when I started my um, when I started my video library, because everything I do in the book, I have in a video library as well, and I have a coaching program. When I first started that, David was the first person. He had a BMW, and he came in, and it, it, you know, this is when people were buying their leases and reselling them, because they were like, "Wow, Carvana wants to pay this, but I got I'm gonna buy it and then resell it to them." Problem with buying it and reselling, you got to pay taxes, which is thousands of dollars comes out of your profit. And then you got to pay fees and the applicable fees to purchase it comes out of your profit. When you sell direct to a dealership, a used car manager, you don't pay those fees. So we'll take those offers that we get because you don't want to go in and you know call these used car managers. This is also in my book. Everything's in my book, the script, what to say to the used car manager. We just tell them, hey, we want to sell our car to a local dealership. We're just calling a couple of places to make sure we get a fair offer. And you, the reason why we don't talk to anybody but the used car manager is because the used car manager's job is to purchase vehicles. That's their job. So, you know, you talk to a salesman and you tell them you want to buy, you, hey, I'm thinking I want to sell my car. What is the salesman going to say? 
you know, you, you, you know, it's, hey, well, you know, when can you come in? You know, are you are you replacing it? Can I show you some? No, you talk to a used car manager because the used car manager's job is to purchase nice cars. When you call them with a two or three year old car, it's a lease. That's inventory that they're interested in, but you got to do it with at least three to five because some of them will lowball you or some or sometimes the car is just not worth it to them. Sometimes a car is worth more to another dealer than it is to a to one dealer. So that's the reason why we get bids always. But when we have a third party restriction, we get them from the used car manager. If there's no third party restriction, then we simply just put the car. We just sell the car to the highest online bidder. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Keep them coming. Got a couple more minutes. All right. Everybody getting value out of the show so far. If you're getting value, just type a bunch of ones in the chat. If you're getting value. This is the, listen, we call this the warm up. Eventually, we're thinking maybe next week or in the next two weeks, we're going to have official episodes, you know, to be like episode one, two. But we got a lot of things we're setting up and structuring before we start calling it episodes. Um, one of the things we're getting clear on so that you can actually tell your friend is timing. We don't, you know, if you don't know when we're going to be live with the show, then you can't tell somebody. You just, you know, but when you know we're live at 12 Eastern time, we're live at 3, 3 p.m. Eastern time then those who want to join the live show can meet us here. If you can't join the live show, then you could always say, hey, the episode premieres at 5.30 or 8 or uh, 8.30 in the evening. So we want to make sure we're covering every part of the country, those on the West Coast and those on the East Coast. So I see all the ones. Glad everybody's getting value. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot that next question up. This is TikTok. Did you already talk about what's happening with Tesla's used car prices? What are your thoughts? You know what, y'all? depreciation depreciation if you if you've been on the show lately i told you your biggest expense is depreciation and here's the here's the dangerous part about buying cars a couple years ago escalades were the were the top 10 biggest depreciating cars made which means if you paid 90 grand for an escalade in 3 years it was worth like almost half it was worth like 50 you lost ridiculous money and there was nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Not only is a lease for the short term, because if you're a long term person, remember, if we keeping this and getting out of that depreciation scale, 8, 10, 12 years to the wheels fall off, you don't care about short term depreciation. See, when you're when you have picked the right foundation, the things that's worrying people with the wrong foundation don't worry you. But if you're on the right found, if you're on the wrong foundation and you purchase one of these cars and something happens in the market or something happens with the company stock price and the values of that car drops, you gotta eat it. If you lease that vehicle, doesn't mean a thing. Vehicle could drop to zero. Don't matter because I'm paying a great monthly payment for it. And in three years, I'm out of this thing. I enjoyed it. Great. Let the people who bought it deal with the fact it lost so much value. Who wins in that instance? People who purchased them secondary. People who are purchasing them as used cars. See, the owners who bought them new lose. The people who are buying them pre-owned, think about what I just said with the Escalade. If you were shopping for an Escalade and it was the top 10 depreciated cars, you could get a three-year-old Escalade for almost half of what a new one was. The second owner wins, but the first owner loses. So le leasing is also a hedge against depreciation. We're, now, here's what's beautiful. I'm going to give you another benefit. Let's just say you have one of the top cars that hold its value. Top 10, top 20 cars that hold their value. You can sell it and put money in your pocket. It's the best of both worlds. If the price of the vehicle goes down, I win, I don't lose. If the price of the vehicle stays high, I win because I'm going to sell it. This is what Dave Ramsey just, Dave Ramsey, man, I swear. Listen, he did a lot of people dirty, man. I love Dave because he's helping people eliminate debt and invest in the stock market. God bless you, Dave. But when it comes to these, these cars, my man, you don't know enough. 
Just because you bought 20 cars and you got a bunch of money, you don't know enough. Not to be telling people with the conviction you talk, the advice you give, you're costing people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. All right, go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. Let's keep it going. We got a couple more minutes before we wrap. Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. <laughs> I have a 2022 Chevy Malibu. It's assessed $5,000 below the loan value. Is it worth trading? Do you want to move? Do you want to, do you want to take the negative negative equity hit? Now, your purpose for trading needs to be, all right, if you're going to take that type of loss and roll over negative equity, you, you, you're, you, it's only two reasons. Either this car doesn't fit my needs anymore. And look, in my book in step four, it's something called shopping, not buying. We're not spending enough time. And I know some people, I don't want you to judge people who are writing these questions and they're saying, yo, I bought this car and I want to trade it in or I want to replace it in a year or two. But we got to do a better job of picking our cards. We got to stop letting, if you use what I'm telling you, no one should ever rush you again. I don't care if you have an emergency. You can get a car in a couple of days using what I teach. But you should not be picking cars and taking a car home that you don't like because you are going to lose money if you replace it. It's no two days about it. You're going to lose money, big money too, not $100, thousands of dollars, 20%. You're going to lose. So if you're doing that because one, that car doesn't fit your needs anymore. Sometimes you needed a bigger car because you, you know, you, you just, you didn't have kids and then you, you, you know, you just had triplets changes in a heartbeat. I was going to keep this car long term, but then, you know, my, we have, we need a bigger car. So I'll deal with the negative equity, but the next car I buy is going to be a family vehicle. We're going to keep it long term. If that's not the case, then we shouldn't just be switching cars because you, we're not taking enough time to choose a car, especially if you, if, if you remember what the most important question is, y'all, how many years am I keeping this next car? That's the first one. When you open my book, when you hear me talk about the most important question, it's the first thing you ask yourself. If your children, if your spouse comes to you and say, man, you know what? I want a new car, man. I want, I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I'm trying to see where should I start? Start with this question every time. How many years are you going to keep the next car? Oh, only a couple. Because if you say 8, 10, 12, that's going to make sure you choose something that you're going to love for eight, 10 or 12 years. And if you're not keeping it that long, then, but any, any it doesn't matter. We got to pick our cars better. Okay. Like we got to stop letting, I have a whole step in my book, shopping, not buying where it's like, yo, you're about to spend 10 to a hundred thousand dollars. Some of you, you deserve, if you walked into the mall right now, and you are going to make a $30,000 decision, 30000 You walked into the mall right now. How would you want them to treat you? <laughs> I want to hear from everybody. See, you see, you don't realize you've been doing the same thing. You walk into a dealership, you're making a $30,000 decision. You're making a $30,000 transaction, $50,000 decision. How would you want them treating any business? If you walked in anywhere and you were about to make a decision, that was a $50,000 decision. Some people like Deshaun, man, if it was five grand, I want to be treated like royalty. I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> Look, Sheila says special. Absolutely. So you can't rush yourself. You can't let anyone rush you because you have to start treating. If you want to win, and I mean keep all the money in your household, save all the money, you really have to start treating your car purchase as a long-term decision, even if you're leasing. You have to start approaching. You can't be, oh, man, I'm just going to do this on a whim. That's how we lose. OK, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, if, if you want to switch car now, if you're saying to Sean, I want to go into a lease, that's that's OK. If you're saying to Sean, you know what? I'm not keeping this car eight years. I, I got a loan on it, but I'm thinking I want to switch out of it now and start leasing. Make the move as long as it's not too much negative equity where it's going to eliminate your ability to get approved for the lease because. You can't put 10 grand of negative equity on a $30,000 car. It's something called loan to value ratios. As long as it's not going to blow out the loan to value ratio, make the move. There's no benefit of you staying in a finance when you know you should be in a lease. All right. Good to see you, Ferris. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. 
got another five minutes this episode. Instagram, I think we're going to end early because when we post the episode, they only have uh, they only give us an hour for the episode. But you'll be able to see the whole episode on YouTube or Facebook when we post it or TikTok. Is the price of the book 75 percent off? Ninety seven dollars. No, it's actually Sheila. You might have missed the countdown. Um, hmm. Let me reset it. If you missed the countdown, let me let me actually see if I can reset it, actually, because sometimes it doesn't reset. Um, $97 is the original price. The special price is 75% off of that. So, no. Um, there you go. All right. See if it resets now. Uh, try it now. If not, then, uh, yeah, get there, y'all. Go get your 75% off. <laughs> Go to my TikTok bio, download your copy, get your 75% off. Go to my Instagram bio, download your copy, get your 75% off. All right, go ahead, uh, Dolan. I just hit the reset button. Let me know if it reset for y'all. Uh, go ahead, Sheila. All right, uh, this one's from Facebook. I know this may be off topic. Does your book tell us how to purchase a vehicle under 10K for cash? Uh, that's something I call I call them smart cars. And that that's stand Now, it's not those little smart cars. We I call it uh, saving money at the right time. If you're going to purchase that type of car, because I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's an entire strategy. Um, this is when, because if I'm purchasing cars under 10 grand, not only am I looking, so I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you some advice, um, uh, Alan, and anybody who's going to be doing this, uh, because you know, and you could just you could just use it as you want. Now, don't now remember what I said of how we qualify a good used car. I talked about it earlier in the show. Title history, service records. You must see service lots of service records. Now it can't be a gap for 20,000, 30,000 miles. There were no service records. Nope. And some of you say, Deshaun, well, what if they changed the oil on their own? What if they didn't? If I can't see it, then I I can't trust it. So you're going title history. Service records, accident history. Now, outside of that, if I'm looking, I'm not just looking on the marketplaces in that price range. I'm looking on Facebook Marketplace. So you 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 know you want to add Facebook Marketplace to one of your marketplaces in that case, um, and you want to have a great local mechanic, or you could use a company like um, uh, YourMechanic.com. Get if you don't have a great local mechanic to inspect that car before you buy it, that's that's a must. That's a must. Um, you 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 a great local mechanic and then just search because at that point you're not always looking for brand sometimes you're shopping for price when you're shopping over 10 grand you're typically you could typically shop for brand honda this is what i want i want a honda civic or i want a nissan or whatever it is when you go under 10 grand you could still do brand um it just becomes a little harder uh but other than that Use it the same way. The only reason it's not in my book is because it's an entire strategy. Like I said, my brother's a master at it. Like literally, my brother, that's his business. And, um, you know, maybe one day I'll write a special edition from the book, an add-on for just that particular strategy. But until then, just um, just take what I just gave you. And, you know, um, you take that. I take that serious. Because that is a strategy, y'all. Like, if, if you're on a fixed income or if you're a low income person and you say, Deshaun, my goal is to just have the least money possible. I don't need a new car. I'll drive an eight year, 10 year old car. The small, here's another thing I'll tell you, Alan. You pay for size. If a car was 25 grand brand new, you can find a relatively, you know, still good one for 10. If you're trying to get a car that was 50 grand brand new, then when you go to 10, you're going to probably get crap. So you don't want to, you want to go as small as possible and, you know, try to get something that was under 30 grand brand new so that at 10 or at nine, it's still quality. If you try to get a BMW that was 60 grand, you're going to get one with 110,000 miles, no warranty, and it's going to be crap. So use that as you can and be careful. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, let's do two more and then we'll wrap. All right. Because we got to come back at three. All right. Um, go ahead. Are car loans similar to mortgage backed securities? In what way? Um, you, you know, uh, an, an, a car loan is an asset backed security. 
So the mortgage, the asset securing the mortgage is a house and a car loan, the asset securing the loan is a car. So it's an asset backed security. They resell those loans on the secondary market, but I'm not sure why you're asking the question. If there's something more in detail that you want to talk about, then, um, then I'll answer it. Go ahead, shoot one more up and then we'll wrap. This is great. It's not showing seven. All right, put it, uh, Sheila. Uh, all right. I don't know. Listen, I don't know. She's like, it's not showing seven. It's, it, there's a cat. The minute you visit that page, everybody saw the timer, right? There's nothing, nothing like there's a 30 minute timer. It says at the end of 30 minutes, price goes back up to $97. So it's a special offer. You know, I tried to reset, but sometimes, you know, uh, it doesn't reset. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, maybe meet me on the next broadcast. I'll see if I can reset it, Sheila. Um, and $97 is worth every penny. Uh, it's actually worth thousands of dollars. So uh, you can't put a product out that's worth what you're paying. You, if It can't be worth $97 and you're charging $97. No, it has to be worth thousands of dollars. And every one of you that write me, check out these reviews. Look, this is Goodreads. We're already at a 4.94 on Goodreads.com. We're already like five stars. Two people get, look, this one girl gave me a, a four-star review. God bless her. Because she's like, you know, I would have liked to talk to the author to ask him some questions. Listen, I got books on my shelf. I can't talk to any of these authors. You know, if it's a great book, it's a great book. But anyway, go ahead. It's all good. It's a, it's it's so we're very highly rated, and um, you know, it's gonna be worth out. I want this to be one of the most valuable books you ever have. Like out of all the books you have, this one right here should be in the top one or two of the ones that save you the most money in your lifetime. All right, so go up to uh, my TikTok bio, grab your copy. As long as that timer is not zero, you got 75% off, or you can go to my Instagram bio, or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com, or you can scan the QR code. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot that one in. Um, I see you, Alan. Thank you, brother. All right. Um, all right. What about rebates to eat the negative equity? Great question, Joe. Great question. Only bad thing is rebates. All right. So this is a wonderful question right here. All right, so you take something something like Jeep. Jeep historically, Jeep Grand Cherokees have had two, three, four thousand dollar rebates. They don't always run them, and rebates y'all are on new cars, not used cars. What he's talking about is if you have negative equity. Remember, I was talking a few questions ago. Gentleman asked about getting out of his car, and I said, "Well, you can't put ten grand of negative equity on a thirty-five thousand or thirty thousand dollar car, the loan to value." But there are some cars that are better to move to with negative equity, because if you can get 7,000 off the price of the car because you have rebates, then you could bring all the negative equity over you know, that you have. Now, the bad thing about this, one day I hope to really have a database where we know what rebates are. When we have thousands and thousands of people shopping at once, now we have hundreds, but when we have thousands like shopping at once and reporting the data to us, we can actually keep a record of you know, hey, Jeep has three thousand dollar rebates. This company has four thousand. Hey, the electric rebate is seventy five hundred. So if you were going to transfer negative uh, equity over, like take Greg, look at Greg's deal. So Greg got a one point five. Uh, uh, he got a under one percent lease on this Kia um, EV six. It's an electric vehicle. Win. It's it's the win edition. He saved not just the seventy five hundred dollars for the electric car rebate. But because of the bid, see, the rebate is not a dealer discount. We don't just get excited to see some people go in and the dealer, oh, I'm taking off the rebate. No, outside of the rebate, the dealer is going to, the whoever wins the bid gives us the biggest discount. So if a dealer who wins the bid gives us a $2,500 discount, and then we get a $7,500 rebate, we save $10,000 off the price of the car. So if you were going to bring your negative equity over of 7000 or 10000 there you go. So if you can find a vehicle that ha it has a higher likelihood of having rebates, Jeep Grand Cherokee is a good one to try. Um, again, hopefully one day we'll have a database. But yes, much easier when you shop your bids for you to get out of your car and go into negative equity with a car with big rebates. Yep, great question, Joe. Glad you asked that. All right, y'all. It was a pleasure. Uh, I see you, Mr. King. Just got the book for the discounted price. Enjoy it. Use it. Please, everybody, 
write me with your uh you you have once you have, have my book listen and when you purchase the book y'all you get the support email for my support team please don't dm me for any issues when it comes to tech because what we typically see is sometimes people look you know you're trying to type fast you see the timer going down you'll see the uh you'll switch one letter up by accident and then that email doesn't come now if that happens what i want you to do is take that support email and then email my support team and they'll get you the link. But anyway, we deliver lots and lots of these books. So as long as you type your email in right, check your email in a matter of minutes, dig right in and please email me your success stories. Email me your deal. I don't want y'all just writing me, showing me pictures of cars like everybody else. People will make videos saying, hey, look at the price of this car. Uh, I mean, look at this car I just got. I want y'all emailing me with numbers. Deshaun, look at how much money I just saved. Deshaun, look at the discount. Look at how much I just paid for this used car below market. That's what I want. Y'all can send me those all day. We'll post them to the show. I love I love hearing y'all success stories. So that's the show. I'll catch y'all on the next segment. If you're available, catch us on the next segment. We will broadcast it out at 5 30 and 8 30. But if you're available to meet us live Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we're here 12 p.m. Eastern time. We're here at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We're on every all four platforms. Tell your friends about us. Let's keep saving this money. And thank you to everybody that got the book. Thank you to everybody that shared the broadcast. We can't do this without y'all. All right, I'll see y'all in the next show.